Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Uh, fire evacuation announcement. There you go. That's the one. Well, in case of fire, there are two ways to exit the chambers. To my left, exit through the council chamber's door, turn left, and walk down one flight of stairs and out the building. Or exit the door to the rear of the chambers. But in either case, once out of the building, walk a safe distance away from the building. Thank you. And can we have roll call, Mr. Secretary? Charles Duran is absent. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis, not here yet. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson is absent. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella is absent. Guillermo Salazar is absent. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay. No, you might be asked. Okay. I'd like to make a motion um, that we seat Linda DeGray as the chair for this evening's meeting. Second. All in favor? Or all in favor? I don't have to. Okay. There you go, Madam Chair. Jeez, thanks. <laughs> okay. Approval of the minutes for May 9th. I move to approve the minutes of May 9th. Second. Any corrections, discussions? I did not find any. Hearing none. Take a vote. Okay. All in favor? I, we're all in favor? No, I'm all right. Oh. <laughs> Three. Three, one. Three, one, zero. Um, approval of. Oh, three zero one. Three zero. I'm sorry. Three zero one. Yes. No. I was not. Voting. She's not voting. She yeah, because I'm abstaining because I was not here oh, for that meeting. Right. Okay. Yes. I I can't count. How many we got? All right. <laughs> yeah, we. Have um, approval of May twenty third. I move we approve the minutes of May twenty third. Second. Any comments, discussions, corrections? They all look good. Again. I do have one. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Page eight, um, that second paragraph, second sentence, Commissioner Steele stated that the health district was at the ART. Who's Commissioner Steele? Yeah, who's Commissioner Steele? <laughs> Not sure. No. 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 So that was, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Steele. Oh, it was a town employee. Yeah. Oh, Dana okay. Steel. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. All right. I wasn't sure who, but unless he wants to become. Okay. <clears throat> Any others? No. Okay. Approve the minutes. Four you favor, Rich? You can say, yes, yeah. four zero zero. Okay. Five. Oh, five. Why am I counting four? Ginny, you weren't here a few minutes ago. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm not counting. I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry. I don't okay. do this very often. Sorry. Um, okay. okay. Well, for, for the public hearing, if you want to. This here is a time for public participation uh, in the meeting for planning and zoning. We welcome comments concerning opinions and concerns relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided there is, that no one may discuss any matter of business that at this time is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that is part of an open public hearing of the commission or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Is anyone in the public like to speak? Anyone in the public like to speak? 
anyone in the public like to speak? Hearing no one wants to come forward, I'll close that portion of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, bond release. Bond release. Public hearing 2479 and public hearing 24, uh, 2526, uh, River Overlook and River Meadow, issue of pavement ex and road accept uh, acceptance. Hey. Um, I don't believe Mr. Pappas is here. Is he here? No. Okay. Um, so um, this was presented to you at the last meeting, and I, I apologize that I was away. But um, basically, we are trying to come up with a, a uh, scenario where we could get these roads paved. The Pappases are very adamant that they want to get it done. They want to get it done as fast as possible. Um, you know, we've, we've looked into surety bonds basically in the past. I don't know how we came up with a cash bond for a road improvement. We've never gotten cash bonds for road improvements. It's very rare. So they would like to utilize the cash once they put up the proper surety bond and the developer's agreement so they can pay the, the paving company. So um, we've come up with the scenario. It was with, with town attorney, myself, and assistant town engineer, John Cabibbo. Um, you know, they've, they've gone through a lot through the town. They, they appealed twice and, and, and won, so that delayed their actions. Um, I, I do believe that they are, are, they are honest and that they truly want to finish this project so they can put it to bed. And we are trying to find the best way so we could get the, the town secure in what's happening, as well as the, uh, put a road in for the people that are already living out there. With a, a, the, the road right now is like 10 years old, and it's just the, the base course. So we're just asking for your approval of the sequence of events where we get the surety bonds, make sure that the developer's agreements, which should have already been um, filed, but apparently have not. We'd just like them just to go through that process, and then we could give them a cash bond release Meanwhile, we'll have that surety bond. So, I, I and the developers' agreement, right? And the developers' agreement. And should you approve this, I, I would ask if we would, rather than have to wait for them to come back to ask for the cash bond release, I, I would ask if you would be willing to allow the town attorney to uh, move forward with the cash bond release without coming back to the Planning and Zoning Commission, because they, they literally have the paving company on call right now. So as soon as we get this paperwork in order, we could get this road paved and all of the other improvements that are required to get in. Because okay. the sequence of events that you're talking about are outlined in our memo of May 5th? 15th, 2019? Yes. The, the last memo you got, which was May 15th, right. basically um, they finalized the developer's agreement for both subdivisions, right. and then they filed the surety bonds. We make sure that there's no expirations, and we could actually put liens on the property if they are not uh, satisfied. Once the surety bonds and the developer's agreement are in place, then we would release the cash bond. And we would also say that no certificates of occupancy will be issued until the road is completed. Jenny? At the last meeting, uh, it was brought up that 2020 is the end date to finish the road. Is that going to give them enough time? I mean, are they going to have it done by 2020? Because it's 2019 I, here. Now. I believe, <laughs> 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 absolutely. Um, I believe that they want to do this tomorrow. As soon as we get this paperwork in, in place, they can go out yeah. and pay the pavers to go out and do it. So I think yeah, by I don't fall have any it should be done. I problem with the pavement. I just have a problem with the development agreement. Why that one should have been in, it was in the conditions of approval. You weren't here, but it was uh, in the know, conditions of approval. You know, all I could approval. say is I don't want to go backwards. I just want to fix no. whatever the situation is but at I, this time. I, I want to get the road in place for the town, for the developer, and for the residents. Right, but so. I'd be happy to know when the developer's agreement comes out. Oh, we, I could absolutely let everybody okay. know. So we could approve with the condition that you guys don't move forward until the developer's agreement is in. And the surety bonds. And the surety bonds. 
Right. And then I would just request if that you would grant us the ability to release the cash bond once the, those items are in place. A motion. Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the sequencing for the road improvements as described in our memo of May 15, 2019, revised June 6, 2019, um, for the subdivision known as Public PH 2479 o River Overlook and PH 2526 River Meadow, both accessed from Bridge Lane and add a condition that the developer agreement shall be, I guess, completed, and that the, the, the cat filed, and that, that the cash can be released according to the, the sequencing that we prescribed. So I, I kind of heard that in different words as once the developer's agreement and charity bonds are in place, uh, the town attorney and staff may release the cash bond. Correct. And they don't have to come back to us. Okay, without coming back to PCC. Thank you. Okay, second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none? We just All did. in favor? Five. Take a vote. So it's 5 zero, zero. I did it right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, old business. Site plan review, SPR 1774, 25 Hazard Avenue. Take the roll, please. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Please state your name and address. When you're ready. Hi, my name is Jessica Bates. I'm a senior engineer with BL Companies. I'm here to present um, the AAA site plan modification at Hazard Ave, 25 Hazard Ave. I'm pretty sure we've all discussed this parcel of land pri previously. Um, since we last met you guys a month or so ago, um, we have met with the town engineer, assistant engineer, John Kibibo. Did something happen? Can you guys see anything? No, oh. I'm not getting any <laughs> you should see the screen. It's much better. <laughs> ah. All right, <laughs> we're back. So um, Jessica Bates, senior engineer, BL Companies, Hartford, Connecticut. Um, we're working on the AAA project at 25 Hazard Ave. Um, it's the intersection of Hazard Ave and Freshwater Boulevard. Um, this piece of the property used to be used as a um, commuter parking lot. Um, since we last met with you guys, uh, we have met with the assistant town engineer, John Cabibbo, and staff and we have addressed the comments that were made by the fire marshal. Uh, just to give everyone a little bit of history on the project, um, since we had approval previously, we have modified the site plan a, a little bit to um, create less of a fill in the floodplain and therefore less compensatory storage than what was approved earlier this year. Um, the regrading of the site plan was kind of done as a blending of the development to the existing parking lot and as part of that re removed the retaining wall that was around the north side of the development that was approved previously. Um, 
in turn, this amount this reduces the amount of fill in the floodplain, the amount of um, compensatory storage that is necessary. And since we last saw you at the commission a month ago, we have since added a very small 200 square foot addition to the northeast corner of the building because they would like to add an additional um, restroom in the north part of the building, which is the automotive bay area. So in between then and now, they have modified the architecture and the building a little bit just to add another build, uh, restroom. So it increased the square footage of the building by 200 square feet. That change did not change the elevations. It did not change the fill. It didn't change anything. The area that got expanded used to be pavement, so it didn't even change the impervious cover of the site. We actually took a little bit of the impervious that is near, like directly adjacent to the expansion, and turned it from bituminous concrete asphalt into landscaping and grass. So it, it has gotten slightly better in terms of the impervious cover even since the last time we saw you. Um, Everything else remains the same on the site. Um, to appease the fire marshal comments, we have added sprinkler to the entire building. So there is now a large ductile iron diameter pipe feeding it to support the fire suppression system. Um, everything else really remains exactly the same. The building finished floor elevation is still one foot above, above the base flood elevation. So it's still 115. 75 above base flood of 114.75. Um, the base, the building placement didn't move at all. All the other corners stayed the same, just one corner expanded slightly. And um, same traffic flow. We still have the one-way drive aisle by the main entrance. That didn't change. And it still complies with all zoning rules and regulations. So everything else has been addressed. We have, you know, met with the assistant town engineer. He is, ex you know, happy with our compensatory storage calculations and everything else, and the fire marshal is happy with the um, the fire suppression system. So um, that's the modification since the last time we saw you. Anybody have comments, questions? Okay. He's also happy with his fire lines. He didn't have any issues with how the, the plan is laid out um, once we put the, the fire suppression system in and the sprinkler system. So, oops, I was trying to zoom in on the building and I didn't. He, he appeared to be. He didn't have any additional comments regarding the fire lanes. So we've okay. hatched out in front of the two um, uh, bay sides for no parking so that people can't stack there and he'd have access to both sides of that building. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve SPR 1774 for the minor site plan modifications um, as prepared by the, the, the draft resolution dated April 11th, I believe, 2019, with the 33 conditions noted. Second. Any discussions? No? Um, I think we had everything said last time they were in here. Okay. Yeah. All right. You ready to vote? Okay. All in favor? Got those against? All right. Zero, zero. No. <laughs> it's four, four zero. One. It's four one zero. Yes, I got it right. <laughs> I counted yeah, myself. <laughs> I'm sorry for clarification. We have four in favor, one against? against. Yes. yes. Do we have any reasons for that? You, so, you've got to give your reason. You have reasons oh, for denial. Oh, uh, yeah. I um, brought them up at the last couple that we discussed. The uh, fact that it's, um, I understand that it's less impact, but it's still lower. And with the amount of rain that we've been getting lately, I really don't want to see any more uh, impact than what was approved the first time. So that's why I okay. voted no. Thank you. Okay. 
Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we move the text amendments A, B, and C to right before number eight, new business. Second. All in favor? Okay. All right. Text amendment XZA uh, 19-03, and that is the... Um, Proposed text amendment to table 5.0, place of worship use. Yeah, the, the town attorneys have requested that we just table that for now. They okay. uh, wanted to research it a little bit further. If you All right. I'd like to make a motion that we table XCA 19-03, text amendment to table 5.20 to our next meeting. Second. All in favor? Mary Five in favor. Jenny. Okay. Text Amendment XZA 19-04, proposed text amendment to Section 5.20.2, Outdoor Dining Patio Audio System. Right. So that that is um, as we had oh, lost my paperwork on this. Yeah, I did too. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> oh, here. <laughs> um, so basically that was just to allow audio systems by way of special permit, which the outside patio would require anyway, so it would just be an add-on. It's a public hearing. There right? was something in there, too, about um, if they didn't oh, comply. Oh, you're right, yeah. This is, this, this is a public hearing. Okay. You're right. Oh, sorry. Okay. So <laughs> um, the, inf the Infield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 13th. 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall oh, Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. ZA, XZA 1904, proposed text amendment to Section 5.20.2, Outdoor Dining Patio Audio Systems. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. All right. <laughs> so do you want me to just read it for the record? Please. Okay. So the motion is to approve a text amendment to Section 520.2 to allow outdoor audio systems on outdoor dining patios subject to established criteria under a special use permit. Town of Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission applicant effective on the date of publishing of the notice of action. And the, um, the wording also includes that you would have the right to take that audio system away should it not um, hold on I want to read it properly um, Commission may approve outdoor audio systems with a special use permit upon review of surrounding uses and compliance with the town of Enfield noise ordinance the Commission may also revoke said permit with non-compliance with conditions of approval okay. did was this submitted to Krog and yes was there any comments um, feedback? The, all three of these were submitted to Krog and we did not receive any referral back on any of them. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Anybody in the public like to comment on this text amendment? Anyone in the public like to comment on text amendment? Anyone in the public like to make comment on this text amendment? Hearing none, I close the public hearing on that. Okay. Yep. I think I think it's just what we asked for. So, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve XZA 1904 text amendment to section 5.20.2 as indicated in our draft resolution dated June 13, 2019. Second. All in favor? Five. Okay. It's unanimous. Okay. Do you want to keep roll again? Yep. <laughs> The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 13, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. XZA 1905, proposed text amendment to include new proposed plan senior life community regulations. Charles Ladd. Here. 
Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay. Um, Larry? Yeah, so, so we did discuss these a little over a month ago. Um, this basically creates a, a, a community of uh, what they call planned senior life community. It would include things such as uh, assisted living facilities and independent living memory care units all on one campus such that family members could theoretically move from one to one one location to the other on campus and still be able to visit each other so this is uh, the the new wave of uh, elder care or not as young as we used to be care I like that better <laughs> I like that term better. <laughs> so I, I think uh, that you had not, you, you pretty much had approved the wording as it was. That's what we sent to Krog. We did not re receive anything back from them. Town attorney did not have any concerns whether about any of the wording here. I think there was one minor um, uh, correction that, uh, for spelling that they had. Okay. So. And I see Val, did you? Anybody in the public would like to come forward? Please. <laughs> Name and address, please. Are we good? Yeah. I'm Valerie Farrow, Avon, Connecticut. I'm the president of Good Earth Advisors. I'm a certified planner as well as an environmental scientist. Um, I worked with staff uh, to develop this uh, proposal that's before you. Um, as you've heard before, and I certainly want to uh, accentuate the fact that elder care is certainly emerging. Um, we know we're, we, we're all aging. As much as we want to try to stop it, we are. Um, Enfield, like many other communities, is, is somewhat older in, in demographics than some of the surrounding communities. Um, I started examining the proposed regulation because I was approached by a prospective operator who had done some initial marketing and saw Enfield as a very strong prospect for, as Lori aptly said, a campus type um, aging in evolution, the more you need, it's there without having to dramatically change your location. Um, also aging in place, not so much in your home, although that's you know often preferred, but maybe you can't handle that. Um, but aging in a continuum of your community, where you shop and see friends, where you worship, all of that. Because I think we have to continue to strive to keep our communities intact. So I uh, assisted staff with drafting some of that to reflect not only that mission and, and that goal, but also um, to afford the commission, you know, the app control over that type of land use. Um, it sounds like a great idea, but we felt like the regulation, when we went through your existing regulations, we really couldn't accommodate it, particularly in the format that we're starting to see emerge and other towns have captured. Um, so I think it positions Enfield. It also gives you a good, strong reg that you can go through and aptly review uh, during site plan and, and make a decision whether that's you know the appropriate use at that site. Um, I think the control is there. I think the mission is there. Um, and I certainly wholeheartedly endorse it. And I'm hoping that there'll be developers taking advantage of this um, quite soon. Thank you. Anyone in the public like to come forward to speak for or against this text amendment? Come on in. Come on down. Name and address. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. I am not speaking on behalf of the Conservation Commission. Um, I'm still a little annoyed that it's so hard to find these text amendments before the public hearing. I went online yesterday and they were not available online, so it would mean I'd either have to call planning office or come in here and look at it. Um, in the day, 
an age where it's, everything's easier to put online. I don't know why it couldn't have been put online, all three of these. Um, maybe I wasn't looking in the right place, but I didn't see them anywhere. Um, and I don't get the paper, so if it was spelled out in the legal notices, I didn't see it there either. Um, so to be able to comment on these things, we need to know what they are. Um, when you were discussing it about a month ago, it, they were vague discussions. There wasn't anything specific. Um, there were ideas, and it was put down on paper. I didn't hear you people review it in any of your subsequent meetings. It just went straight to Krog. And um, so now I'm still commenting blind. But I did hear the discussions that it was going to be added to industrial zones. And my concern with that is, is the appropriate places, um, they abut you know, if it's abutting a residential zone, that's one thing, but if it's abutting a, a prospective industrial site that might have a big trucking warehouse, I don't think it would be appropriate. And um, basically all of our farmland is in industrial zone, so we would, we would be losing farmland also, our potential farmland. Um, and it would be developed. Um, in areas where there may not be water and sewer available. So that would be that would be a concern that it would require these facilities to be extended when I believe um, certain areas are not supposed to be sewered in town uh, without approval from the state. So um, I just want to caution you when you get one of these developments, that the site is appropriate. And um, if there's an empty site next door, there's nothing you're going to do to stop an I-1 industrial site from putting in a trucking warehouse or something like that next to these elderly people that are trying to enjoy their last few years of life. So um, it does concern me that. Uh, I believe you're going to allow it in an industrial zone versus just the residential. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for or against? Anyone else? Anyone else like to come forward to speak for or against? Val, would you like to um, address the concern? Oh, wait. Sorry, oh. sir. Sorry, Val. No I need your name and address, sir. My name is Douglas Oaks, 29 Quaker Lane here in Enfield. Um, I came here for one of the reasons that she just brought up, but that was on a text amendment 1903 about the religious worship uses I had some concerns about it because I couldn't find anything on it we're finding a lot of religious uses going into the business fronts and that's the reason why I came if the town could we've when you put that, these in the sir. announcements excuse me the sir, kiosks, we've tabled that one so we yeah. can't discuss that one okay, okay I'm sorry we can only discuss the one we're currently doing 1905 Apologize. okay not a problem. All right. Thank you. M excuse me, uh, Madam Chairman. Mr. Oaks, if you'd like to come to the planning office or uh, uh, to the next. This, this OK. All it is is removing places of worship from that zone. That's it. My question is why. OK. OK. We, we'll, we'll answer that uh, uh, at the planning office. <laughs> OK. Anybody else like to speak on 1905? Anyone else? One last time. No, you're on. <laughs> uh, if she if was you going want, to address Madam Karen. Chairman, yeah. Um, so we don't advertise our public hearings as far as the text or anything. We advertise in the paper what is going to be heard. Right. If and it says if you're interested, come to the planning office. So uh, you know, unfortunately, Karen, I don't know when. I know you. You know where we live. <laughs> so uh, I would hope next time you just uh, pursue us a little bit more. But the um, Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed exactly what we sent to Krog, and they reviewed it word by word at, at a public hearing. So, um, well, that, I'm sorry, not a public, 
meeting, a public hearing, a public meeting. This is the public hearing of that. So um, the other thing is, is that this will require it to be on public sewer and public water. So m more than likely, it will not be able to go into most of the residential zones because they aren't on sewer and water. So, Mary, um, I guess one of the questions I have is. Is there any way when we do something like this, can we put them up online just for the convenience? Um, yeah, well, is there we no could, reason we why? Try. It's, it's, I know it. I know it's an that we have to extra do it. step. I, need to I totally understand. So, yeah. yeah, but if we, we, can, we try can try to, to that, that would be great. Especially when we do three of them like this. Yeah. You know, sometimes Certainly. having so many of them might be able to clarify a few things. So of course, we'll, thank we'll you. We'll try to get that done. I'd go for that too. <laughs> <laughs> it is easier. I, I understand that's a very valid question. Yeah. Yes. Um, just to follow up on on some of the questions that are being posed, uh, Lori's correct. If you look at the zone uh, as proposed, you have to have water and sewer. Um, as you know, it was written with extensive buffers, natural resource amenities, protection of natural resources. So the way it's it's basically constructed is to encourage a developer to look for a suitable site that would provide, you know, the, uh, an apt environment for aging population. Um, as you know, these are private facilities, they're not state-funded facilities. And therefore, marketing, aesthetics, arrival, image is of the utmost importance. That's why you never find anything on their site. I mean, you just can't turn around and there's a wrapper and it's picked up. I mean, it's just, it, that's the way things have to be handled. So um, I think there's adequate controls there. Water and sewer, yes. Buffers, yes. But in terms of the process that the commission has gone through, I believe there was extensive informal discussion first, providing educational materials by Lori to acquaint you with aging populations, markets, and how it's being handled. Then we came back with an extensive list of evaluations of other towns, of land use controls, how it's handled. There was an extensive discussion there with some feedback to Lori to make amendments. We did so. That's what went to Krog, and here we are today. Yes, Jen. Um, this is this would be approved once it gets on our regulations it would be by special use permit absolutely okay because I was the only one that spoke at the last meeting against industrial and that was my only concern I think the regulations as you have worked very hard on them are great and they'll be a attribute to our towns and our citizens but the industrial one was a real sticking point with me. Right. So as long as it's a special use permit, we get to say about it. And that's not to say that, you know, just because it's industrial, it's going to fit. It's, it's, it's got to have a lot of things going for it yeah. and pass the muster of these very rigorous market studies mm -hmm. um, in order to get financing. So I think there's enough there to ensure, you know, the, the right environment. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else like to come forward and speak for or against? Anyone else? One more time, anyone else like to come forward? No? Hearing none, I'm going to close this. Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> X, XZA 1905. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve XZA 1905 um, text amendment to allow planned senior life communities and as prepared by staff and the draft, draft re resolution dated June 13th. Second. Any comments? Any discussion? Hearing none, shall we take a vote? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, public hearing 2942. I'd like to read the yep. legal notice, yep. please. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, June 13, 2019, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application, PH 2942. 
143, 145, 147, 149, and 153 Elm Street, and Lot 72 Carroll Street. Special use permit for commercial shopping center development for permissible uses in a business local BL zone. The shops at Elm Street Square LLC, owner applic applicant, Map 57, lots 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, and 72 BL, and R33 zones. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Richard Suzak is here. Okay. All right. Hi. Good, e good evening, Madam Chairman. Um, we're just setting up, a, and while we're doing that, um, for the record, Attorney Paul Smith, I represent uh, the shops at Elm Street Square LLC, which is the applicant and owner of the subject property. Um, with me tonight is Frank Triano, who is the principal of the applicant and the owner. Um, Dave Zayax is the professional engineer who designed and worked on this project. He's setting up the, the easel, and also I think Scott Hesket from uh, F.A. Heskett Associates, who was the traffic uh, engineer on this um, development, is also present um, to answer any questions or to uh, give you any guidance with regard to what was done with regard to the traffic. Um, by way of overview, um, the property is located on the north side of Elm Street. If you might recall, it's approximately, it was a, it's approximately a 16-acre site. Um, when I say 16 acres, that encompasses not only the colored area, but the um, proposed open space area, which runs up towards Montclair. Um, the total site, as I said, is a, approximately 16 acres. Of that five acres in the rear, um, we have proposed to use as uh, what's known as passive open space. It's going to be um, our proposal is to own it, maintain it by the the owners of the of the development, but it's it's strictly passive open space. Um, it will have no um, use um, other than to again be open space um, for the neighborhood. Um, that leaves us the front parcel, which is a little over nine acres in size, um, which. Um, you may recall we rezoned, I believe it was 2016, probably about th almost three years ago. Um, we came to the commission with a proposal to rezone that front piece, uh, which was existing R33 to uh, business local or BL. Um, that was approved in July of that year by the commission. And we are now back here under your BL regulations, um, proposing um, this um, commercial development. Um, basically, as you can see from the development itself, um, our initial proposal here is for um, basically four buildings. Um, we've tried to uh, manage this site in a way that um, it's the, the real retail activity is towards the front of Elm Street um, and into the center. Um, right now we have um, one tenant that has committed, um, which is People's Bank, to the bank building which we had proposed, which is um, the building to the, to the right on this map, which would be to the east. North, this would be to the east. Um, so they're, they're not an existing bank in town, so they're anxious to come into the uh, Enfield market. They look forward to that. Um, they were actually um, the successor to First National Bank of Suffield, which was interested in this site. They acquired First National Bank of Suffield and were also extremely interested in, in operating a branch facility at this location. Um, so. This is the site that we are proposing at this point. Um, a couple of things, and I'm going to have Dave Zayak sort of walk you through a, a, a bunch of it. But as you can see, 
Um, we paid particular attention to try to craft um, berms and plantings around the circumference of the site in a way that minimizes its impact on uh, any of the residential areas um, to the east or the west. Um, anything to the north, again, you have this large amount of open space. We are even proposing on both sides of our water quality basins, um, shrubbery on one side and then trees on the other. Again, softening this whole area in terms of how it impacts um, the, the residences. Um, we've did extensive work, and, and Dave again and, and Scott will get into this um, in terms of a design for ingress and egress to this site, being sensitive obviously to the fact that Elm Street is a highly trafficked road. Um, because it's across from Paloma Drive, um, it's ingress and egress to the entire site is going to be controlled by light, uh, by traffic light. There are going to be some dedicated lanes, as I remember, Dave, correct? For, for turning. Um, so it will significantly improve, improve sort of um, this um, uh, intersection, if you will. And, and as, as you can see, it will be actually um, the, the main ingress and egress into the site. Um, and so uh, we think it works really well. We've, we've been very careful in terms of, and you have, you have as part of your plans, you have what we sh have shown as architecturals, you have our lighting plan, and we've tried to be, I think, reasonably sensitive in all those areas, again, to try to minimize any impact on the residences which are located um, near the site. Um, And again, we've, we've designed everything um, as a BL, which in this zone is a single story facility, so you don't have any large multi-story buildings, which are, again, might impact um, abutting residences. They're all, I think the max height on our buildings, I think shows a little under 24 feet, like 21 feet or something like that on our, on our architecturals. And again, um, they will sort of walk you through some of those designs, but it's, um, you will see it's a very sort of, um, we're, we're trying to do a very soft look. Um, some of it's um, really nice. The, the bank, for instance, is gonna be an all brick building. Um, so it, I think it'll have a great look. Um, I think it'll minimally impact, um, and as you can see, it'll minimally impact um, the residences on each side and going up. So, um, this has obviously been something we've worked on a long time since the, the, the zone change approval to try to get right. Um, and uh, I think we're very comfortable with the plan. We think, again, that it um, is sensitive to the neighborhood and also um, works very well in terms of a busy highway like um, Elm Street is in terms of the traffic signal. Dave, I'm going to give it to you just to walk them through sort of some of the technical stuff. Good evening, I'm Dave Zayax with uh, F.A. Heskill Associates, and um, as Paul pointed out, uh, our firm prepared the site plan package that's before you this evening. And um, uh, as Paul pointed out, we have the, the front portion of the, uh, of the site facing um, Elm Street is 9.93 uh, acres of land that was rezoned to BL. And so all of the um, data that's in the zoning table and the analysis for the site is based just on that 9.93 acres. It does not consider uh, the open space or anything like that that's left alone uh, outside of all of our calculations. So when we say something meets the criteria, it's based on the 9.93 acres. We believe the, uh, the proposed project meets all of the design criteria that's in your zoning ordinance. We're not asking for any waivers. Uh, the site will be served by town sanitary sewer, public water, gas, and electric. We are proposing 55,796 gross square feet of area in the four buildings. Uh, as Paul pointed out, the, uh, the smaller building, which will be on the right-hand side here, is going to be a People's Bank uh, branch that will have a drive-through. There are no other drive-throughs proposed uh, on the project. 
We have 279 parking spaces uh, proposed, which meet the, uh, the zoning requirements. The lot coverage is 49%, and that's uh, compared to your 66% that's allowed in the zone. The total building coverage would be 12.9%, and that's versus the 35% uh, the that's allowed in the zone. So we're considerably below both the uh, total lot coverage and the building coverage with the project. Did you get up and put that up? Frank's going to flip over the, uh, that board up there. It has a, a blow-up of the site plan on it. So we can talk about the general layout. This is a colored rendering of a combination of sheets LA1 and LS1 that are in your package. But basically, uh, we would be looking at two uh, driveways to Elm Street. One would be the main driveway, which would be across from Palumbo. That will be a full service driveway, serviced by the, uh, the traffic signal at that location, which we will have to modify. And then we are proposing a driveway further to the west over here onto uh, Elm Street, which will be a restricted drive, right turn in, right turn only, out. Um, we think that's necessary just for general ac good access on the site and also for um, truck access to the site and also for, for emergency services. Relying on one driveway, I, I think, would not be prudent. So at that location, that will not be signalized, but it will be restricted right in, right out. Um, we will have another access drive located all the way around the site for access for trucks and for, again, for emergency vehicles. Uh, the, there will be an extensive use of sidewalks throughout the site which will tie down in two points at both driveways to a new s sidewalk that we will construct along, that's our side of the uh, Elm Street, be a new concrete sidewalk which will tie into the existing walks uh, to the west and to the east. Our um, internal landscaping within the parking area uh, exceeds the minimum amount required in the zone of 15 percent. And as uh, Paul pointed out in his uh, statement that the, uh, the layout uh, focuses um, all of the buildings towards Elm Street for the public. To public access to the buildings will basically be aimed towards uh, Elm Street and away from the neighbors. Now, uh, given the amount of coverage and uh, both the lot coverage and building coverage, there is some room on the site for potential future development. And we fully understand that, uh, particularly in the, uh, the rear of the, the, the uh, back building, this green area here will remain uh, in a, uh, a mode condition um, and open uh, until such time as we may be back with another special use application. But at this time, we have no use in mind for that area right now. But that requires a special permit to come back and, and do anything there. Um, if we want to take a look, just a, a brief uh, look at um, a previous master plan that we, we all talked about um, uh, when we did the zone change, but also uh, it was the subject of uh, the wetlands application for the project. We went, we went forward with a, a larger project before the Wetlands Commission um, at the time. Frank, why don't you put that plan up on there? Just to give you a comparison, and I, w I wanted you to uh, understand that we, we listened to the comments that we received during uh, the zoning meeting in, in the preparation of this final plan that we've brought before you. But that, um, that plan that we presented at the time had over 65,000 square feet. It had uh, over 330 parking spaces. And um, from I went back and I looked at my notes of the meeting. And some of the concerns and comments that were expressed by the commission at the time was there was some concern about the placement of a 20,000 square foot retail building way up at the north end of the site. Um, you asked us at the time to consider increasing the distances of the buildings from the property lines uh, west and east. There was concern about uh, orienting the buildings uh, away from the properties to, uh, to on the west and the east, particularly the rear of a building. For instance, I know there was some concern about this building over here on the right-hand side, that the rear of that building was aiming towards the residents to the east. And uh, you definitely wanted to see our lighting have uh, zero trespass over onto properties. 
and you wanted to see a, uh, an extensive drainage system that would uh, present no impacts to the neighbors. And of course, extensive buffer landscaping to be provided. And we really think that the, the new plan that we've presenting with to you this evening uh, addresses all of those comments and concerns that you expressed. We worked hard to listen to what you had to say. Uh, the site lighting is uh, we're going to have all new LED lighting. Uh, details were provided. We have a simple high-tech appearing luminaire. We've used it on very similar ones on all of our new sites. It's very techy looking, very nice. 20-foot uh, high poles on concrete bases, so really the poles will be lower than the buildings. Uh, they're dark sky compliant, and they're cutoff fixtures. So uh, we provided uh, the photometric plans for, for the design of the, of the system to uh, staff, and you, you have copies of that. But basically, we'll have uh, zero-foot candles at all property lines, um, including Elm Street. So you have full cutoff. It's contained on our site. We're very, very sensitive to the neighbors. And, uh, and again, these, these light poles are down below the elevation of the buildings. So I think we have an excellent uh, lighting plan. It's uh, energy efficient, and it will be, uh, again, sensitive to our, to our neighbors. Um, our drainage plan, we submitted a comprehensive report to staff, which was reviewed by your town engineer. Uh, we are constructing um, a, a large detention basin, water quality basin, up at the north end of the site. Why don't you take that? Yeah, take that one, switch that one back. And uh, this, this was what was uh, reviewed and approved by your Wetlands Commission uh, last year. So the stormwater system I'm presenting this evening is the one that they, they uh, reviewed and approved. But up here at the north end of our site, there will be a large uh, stormwater basin, water quality basin constructed at that location. As a result of that, uh, all of the drainage on our site will be directed to that basin. And um, that basin will serve as a detention pond and a water quality basin to polish the water before the uh, runoff leaves our site and heads north to the natural systems to the north. Uh, we'll have a reduction in peak flow over what's presently coming off the site. That was hard to do since the site is not developed. So to, to have less peak runoff coming off the site, you need a, a large, we've devoted a, a, a big chunk of this property to a, a large detention basin uh, to accomplish that, to make sure there's no impact uh, to the uh, resources to the north. But that's for all storm events, from the two-year storm all the way to the 100-year storm event. Really, this, your town usually focuses on a 25-year event, but um, I like to design them all the way to the 100-year event. So uh, with the system, it easily meets the, uh, the town's requirements, and uh, it meets the DEP's water quality standards uh, for, uh, you know, for this type of project. What we've done, too, also in, is included in the, uh, the grading plans along both the west side and the east side. We have a, uh, a swale running down along the property line, which will direct runoff from our site, but it also captures runoff coming off the backyards of our neighbors. And that will be directed to that, to that water quality basin as well. So n none of our water gets on to their property, and none of their water gets on to our property. Seems like a good compromise. So uh, that's the way that system was, uh, was in, uh, proposed within the project. Um, you can see in your uh, comments that you receive from the town engineer that he's reviewed the study and um, it concurs with, uh, with the design. Um, you want to take a quick look at the uh, architecture now? Paul, you want? The bank first. Yes, let's start out with the bank. The bank uh, design has been evolving, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that it's a, entirely a brick building. It's, uh, it's going to be a very nice uh, New England-style colonial-looking building, uh, completely uh, cladded with, uh, with brick. Simple roof design. Um, you know, it's a true, true New England-looking uh, structure. Um, there is, you can see here where we have our small uh, drive-through. There's one bay for um, access to a teller, uh, which I understand is going to be a high-tech virtual teller. I haven't seen one of those yet, but 
Um, and then one lane will be devoted to an ATM machine. So it's very modest. drive throughs through banks don't generate very much traffic, and they're only open pretty much when the bank is open except for the ATM machine. So uh, that seems to be well situated and works out well. Uh, I'll put up the... Uh, yeah. Then for the, uh, the other buildings, um, the architecture of those will be uh, all the same, going with a theme here. And uh, these are set up to be um, potential multi-tenants. I mean, they could potentially be one tenant, but they're designed to accommodate multi-tenants. Um, and you can see um, the height has been varied across the building by a couple of feet um, from building to building. There's uh, lots of glaze, glazing and glass in the front of the units. There's individual sign panels for, for the tenants. And it's going to be a nice mix of materials. We've got brick that will be very similar to what's on the bank. We have some other masonry materials mixed in, um, flat stones, flat panels. And then uh, where the sign panels are, uh, uh, those would be um, hardy plank um, clapboard siding. So all, all in all, the, uh, the bank or the, uh, the, these buildings will have a nice modern retail look to them, to all the facades. Um, we're not proposing any signage at this time. This is strictly for illustration purposes. You can see their fake names up there. Um, that'll have to come back either before staff or before the commission, depending upon what they propose. We are looking at the only lighting that would be on the building would be only on the f front facades, and, and there would be small Scots walls systems right there. And the main thing for those is just to shine down on these sort of column areas, just to add so a little bit of lighting flavor to the building uh, at night, uh, rather than just relying on the, wind, the lighting coming from the glass. Uh, these, these are strictly for aesthetic purposes. They, don't, they will not throw off any glare. They're not wall packs. They're decorative lighting. Um, and you can see also over each doorway, there'll be fabric canopies installed, uh, so in, in some cases over the windows, in other cases over the, uh, over the doorways. So it gives you a nice contemporary look. Um, each building has a screened a dumpster location proposed and a loading space designated for each building as well. For landscaping, could you flip back? Yeah. There's a very extensive landscaping plan uh, shown on your sheets, um, LS1 and LS2, with a lot of emphasis on, um, yeah, that's it right there. A lot of emphasis on the heavy buffering um, on within the 35-foot buffer that's required on both the west and east property lines. You can see in, in color here the amount of material that's being proposed along. And that doesn't take into consideration. There's actually, if you walk along the backs of the, uh, of the properties on, on both sides, there is a, uh, you know, there's an assortment of different plant material that exists now on the, on the property lines and also uh, there's various different kinds of fencing there as well that are privately owned. We don't plan on touching any of the fencing and whatever uh, plantings are along the common boundary line, those will remain as well. Those aren't shown on this plan. This is all planting that we will install. We've also added uh, additional planting along the north side of the uh, uh, detention basin, even though that's several hundred feet from the end of Montclair, um, we, we added in some additional buffer there, which will have an opportunity to grow and block any possible view that they would have um, of the back of our development. Um, we are planning on saving a few trees along Elm Street. Those are mixed into the landscaping plan. You can see where there's like a gap here and here, where there's no proposed plantings. There are, there are a few nice mature trees uh, in that area that we can save. Um, they'll be far enough behind our new sidewalk and uh, they're within that area between our proposed parking lot and the sidewalk and uh, we're gonna, uh, we'd like to save those. Uh, we have uh, foundation plantings proposed around each of the buildings. And we have considerable uh, landscaping within the parking lot islands. And just to give you an idea of the numbers we're talking about, this is a lot of landscaping. 
We've got uh, some of this is required by your zoning ordinance, which is very clear as to what the buffer requirements are, but then there's additional landscaping that we're proposing above and beyond that. But you're looking at 104 canopy trees planted on the site, which would be a mixture of maple, birch, honey locust, pen oaks, elm trees. That's all listed on sheet LS2, I believe. You're also looking at an additional 91 ornamental trees, which would be flowering trees such as crab apple and red beds. Then we have 183 evergreen trees, which would be a mixture of fir, spruce, pine, and arborvitae. Those are primarily on both sides of the uh, property lines mixed in with the berms. And then there's also many shrubs and lots of ground cover proposed within the project. Um, what we've been focusing on is uh, we're adding uh, berming along um, the side, the seaside here where the bank would be. And then back here um, on both the east side and the west side, we have re relatively large berms proposed at those locations, four to six feet, four to six feet high with additional, with the plantings obviously on top of those. And the, and the theory there is that um, you start to pick up neighboring houses on both sides here, and um, they really won't be able to see the front parking lot at all because the building in the rear will block that. But, uh, and the lighting, of course, is below the elevation of the buildings. But uh, any view that they may have of the back building, that's why we emphasize the berming in that location and the heavy landscaping there to block the view of the back of this building from these neighbors on both sides. Um, then we have the traffic improvements on Elm Street. Uh, we have filed an application with OSTA. This project is large enough to require an OSTA certificate to be issued by the state traffic or state uh, uh, administration, traffic administration now, uh, which is really an arm of DOT. And we've been in contact with them for a couple of years. I, as I recall, we talked about that during our zoning meeting that we have been working out a, an appropriate layout. Um, we all know what the goal here is. The goal is to get exclusive left turn lanes, one into our site and one into Palumba, particularly the one at Palumba because it's missing. The state has tap danced around that intersection for 35 years that I know of. We've, as you know, we've worked on every shopping center in town. And we've done, a lot. <laughs> but for some reason, that intersection keeps getting uh, jumped over by people. We've done a lot of work at a lot of intersections, but <laughs> that one's been missed. And uh, we all know if you're traveling westbound on Elm Street. Um, if you live, if you know it, you get out of the way in time. If you don't, you get stuck behind that one car that's trying to make a left-hand turn, and it can get interesting. So uh, this will solve that problem. And uh, we're looking at putting the, uh, that, that improvement. We, it requires a little bit of widening. We've been very sensitive to come up with a widening plan, working with DOT, uh, so that we don't have to move all of the utility poles once again on the south side of Elm Street. And, uh, and we do not um, have to dig into the front yards of, of the uh, three homes, I think it is, um, from uh, on the east side. Uh, we don't have to dig into their front yards to, uh, to accomplish this. So um, it's, it's been a challenge, but I think we've, we're successful. It's before the state for review. Your staff obviously has been reviewing it as well. Um, if you have any comments at all regarding traffic impact or anything, Scott Hesketh is here. He's really the traffic expert. I'm just uh, an imposter here right now uh, trying to fill in the gaps. But, but basically, we're going to have to modify the traffic light. It's going to be, for all practical purposes, a new traffic light. It's a shame they just put up a traffic light a couple of years ago, but uh, they didn't take into consideration the fact that there was a commercial. There is a commercial driveway there now. Remember, there was a nursery operation here for many years. And there is a full driveway there. You can drive in. And there's a house, and uh, you know. Uh, unfortunately, they chose to ignore the fact that that driveway existed, mainly because I guess the, nur the nursery operation was out of business by then. But uh, so it's a T intersection. It is not a four-way intersection. We have to modify that to make it into a four-way intersection. So, unfortunately, we have to take down some. Some of the light that was paid for by taxpayers' dollars and replace it with private dollars. Um, if we look at the staff comments, uh, you have your planning uh, review. 
And then there's the other departments. Um, most of the comments are very minor comments, as outlined the way I read them. Uh, they can, uh, staff is, uh, is uh, basically incorporated those into recommended conditions of approval the way I see it, but uh, health department had no comments. They'll be involved in the whole building process, obviously, um, as time goes on with the building permits. Fire department um, really had no comments. They'll, they'll be involved with establishing fire lanes and appropriate signage. Uh, we have to work with them very closely on that. And then they requested an additional hydrant than what we have shown, which we will accommodate. Engineering had no major comments. Um, the police really didn't have any major comments. Uh, Scott Heth Hesketh has been working with your uh, traffic safety officer over the past couple of weeks. Uh, they've been going back and forth with um, various technical questions, but the, your, your police department will be involved in the OSTA review, so that will continue. And then WPCA sewer people um, had no concerns. So um, in summary, I don't believe that there will be any, any type of significant revisions of any kind with the plans needed to address the few staff comments that we have, and we, uh, we accept their, their recommended conditions. Um, at this point, um, I think I'll turn it over uh, if you have any questions. Mary? You want to go? Yeah. Okay. Um, one of my questions is the way the bank is situated, the drive through. It's right up near a home that's right over that little buffer that you put there. My concern is I, I know ATMs are loud. And I know when you have a teller out there, that can be very loud. And that's a lot of noise that can go carry right over into there. Is there any way, I guess, why was the that drive through put on that side? Because I would think it would be better placed on the other side only because of that residence, that house that's right over there, um, because the building would block a lot of that noise. So just a question about what that, why it was put on that side. And the other thing is being able to reduce that noise if it's going to have to stay on the other side, which I'm not sure I like very much abutting a, a residence, a house right there is a little bit of a concern to me, so. Yeah, um, one, of the, uh, one of the thinking is that we're, we're really trying to present a, a well-planned, um, you know, multi-building development here. And it just, didn't, it just doesn't, it, in my way of thinking at least, it just doesn't feel right to have, and when we pull into this beautifully landscaped development and everything, that the first thing you see is a drive through The bank is a beautiful building. It's a nice little modest, you know, New England type of building. And by reversing it, you basically take away all the arch architectural component to the, build, to the building the way I see it and replace it with the, the drive through drive through is very modest. I mean, it, this is, it's not a major drive through similar to the one across, right across the street over here. But um, so that was, the, th that was the, the way for looking at it from a planning pr perspective. Then um, taking into consideration, you know, we, the building is skewed from the neighbor, and I was just looking at the, the closest point of the canopy to, to, to the property line is 61 feet, and then it's 79 feet to the first corner of the actual building itself. So you've got a pretty good distance between even the point of the closest point of the can the canopy skewed to the, to the property. So we think with, with landscaping and, um, and the fact that, I mean, if this, was, if this was a fast food restaurant or something, uh, or one of our Dunkin' Donuts or, you know, Starbucks or something like that, I wouldn't even be having this discussion with you because we would have put it someplace else. But it's a bank. And the bank, uh, the teller is only open when the bank's open. It's not open on Sundays. It's not open at night. It's not open first thing in the morning, you know. And the yeah, ATM the ATM is 24 hours, and yeah, I don't know if you've heard know. the ATM is, over here, but you can why hear is an that. ATM noisy? I'm I'm confused. Why? Beep 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 when they press the buttons. Have you ever oh. heard that? Um, they are loud. They can get very very loud. And well, so I think we can deal with that. But, if we uh, can make sure that that is something that is not yeah an issue. Um, and I guess for me, I'm more concerned about it's not just the aesthetics of it, but also allowing the neighbors to use their property the way that they you know, for their enjoyment. And I know that you say, well, it's only during these hours or those hours. What concerns me more than anything is making sure that they're protected and still can use their property. Right. And even though you have a, 
one side or the other and it may not look the greatest in the world you know for me it's more the concern of what's best too for that area in that neighborhood and so that's why i'm more concerned um with that in the end you know for for our neighbors and that one i can see when you put the first one up you could just see where on the map you can see that house right there and i'm like wow right away i could see that and that concerns me it just really does because i really don't want these neighbors affected any more than they already have been so yeah, i appreciate that i do jenny um i was looking at john cabibbo's memo uh dated june 7th when i was reviewing this mm -hmm. and i didn't hear you mention his two concerns he had a concern about the easement for the sidewalks because the public is going to be using them and he had a, a concern that uh, on the landscape plan there were two trees that were directly over the proposed drainage pipes and he didn't think that was a good idea so you know you might want to check his yeah. memo so you yeah no I, uh, um, in answer to your f first comment was uh, we're, we're proposing a 10-foot easement along the entire front and it'll be for highway purposes it'll be in favor of the uh, the state which the sidewalks a public entity but uh, state the state likes to regulate sidewalks a lot, but they don't want to own them. So uh, it's kind of a funny thing, you know. But, uh, but yes, That's we have that comment addressed, and then obviously we'll we'll uh, we'll rearrange the trees a bit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have. I was out to the site. <laughs> of course, I was out to the site. <laughs> uh, one of the concerns that I had was that driveway, the dip. Are you going to address that so that if traffic is coming in and out of that that yeah. they're not just no it'll be a nice smooth transition uh, there'll be some grading going on and because that was pretty steep and i'm glad to hear that you're going to leave a lot of that uh plantings that are already there that vegetation because um i did drive down st james and carroll and i'm thinking well yeah there's some of their back vegetation mm. and with leaving the boundaries because the thing that comes to mind is, to me, is what happened over um, in the Mayfield. Their buffer, they, it, it, I just don't want that happening to these people so that they're staring at huge buildings. Yeah. You know, so. No, we're, we're being sensitive to that and. Uh, so I was glad to see yeah. that and hear you say you're leaving a lot of that now. Yeah, because I mean, technically, you know, um, I've done this before in town. Your ordinance does allow flexibility. You know, if we come in here and try to convince you that uh, we, we get credit for existing vegetation and we don't need to add in as much vegetation. Now, we've had that discussion on other sites and, and we've agreed not to do that because different circumstances, but regardless, you know, it's in your ordinance. Here we're, 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 we're planting what we need to plant and what's there is there. So you, if you want to think of it as a multiple layer, yeah, that, that's a way, that's one way to look at it. But that, that's, we're not coming in here asking for any credit for anything that's out there other than the, the, the three, I think it is really nice trees along Elm Street. Obviously we're not going to plant a new tree next to that but you know but other than that now i'm glad to see what you've done for the vegetation <laughs> and in that buffer thank you for that part so rich I, I, again i'd like to sort of reiterate what mary had said in terms of i looked at the elevation that you presented for the bank and i guess the canopy over the drive through was with it was at the same elevation as the eve elevation for the main building and, and normally what happens is, is I think that what you would like to do is you, you sh probably should, you know, decrease the importance of a canopy versus the main building so that, you know, what, it, what I would like to do is see something divorced from being at that high elevation. I think the play height they show right now is around 16 feet. And on, on the previous plan that they submitted, they had a canopy that was only about 11 feet high. So in, in that sense, I think that, you know, what happens is that it, when you start the directing noise in terms of Mary's concern, and I agree with her, is, is that the fact that there's a lot of noise, and this is actually probably the closest that you come to any ex existing um, structure for the adjacent residences. So that, you know, probably what I would 
sort of try to recommend is that you would increase the amount of plantings that you had there, especially create a, a more diverse buffer that would protect that area for, you know, year round. So I think that if you sort of decrease the size of that canopy, which won't allow the sound to travel up high, and then direct it towards, you know, a buffer of trees or a berm even, you know, looking at the grading plan, there's really no reason why you couldn't even add a little berm. Mm, I was thinking about that actually. Uh, when I started thinking about the comments and things, I was thinking that we could definitely enhance that berm on that side. Right, because right now it's just graded, you know, more or less flat. But right. the thing is, if you added a little berm and then added some, you know, trees, you can probably buffer that that house. And, and that is the closest that you're coming, you know, to the main structures. Because looking at the west side, you've, you've more or less, you know, mimicked the, the distance from, you know, your buildings anyways to, you know, the, the structure of the residences on that, those sides, right. which is what we were sort of recommending you do so that, you know, I think that you did listen to us for, for that other side. But, and, you know, I guess once you get past, you know, the bank building, you're into the back of some deeper lots and you're into the back of, of that, you know, residence on the east side. So, so once you get past that area, I think that, you know, everything probably should be working properly. But definitely, you know, I would sort of agree with Mary to enhance that area so that you can, you can, you know, diminish the amount of noise that would be transmitted. I think we can definitely do that. And again, I, I almost apologize for not having a big enough berm over there after I look at the plans. I mean, it's, we can definitely do a better job. Just to add a couple more items, uh, Frank Troiano, um, a developer, um, there was a question before and some of the neighbors and speaking to a lot of the neighbors over the time, I think everybody thought we were coming right back in once we had our, our zone change. We were trying to do a thoughtful plan that we had a change on the bank and a few other ideas. So we wanted to make sure it was very clear and some of the promises that we made before that we're donating the back land or we're actually putting it in a conservation easement. I just want to say it myself because I made a lot of promises to a lot of people. I want to make sure it's very clear that we are continuing to do that. We want to make sure that's held proper. Um, also, Carroll Street, there's a small trail there on Carroll Street. We've been working with DPW as giving them an easement to have that be a, um, is that the sewer line? Sure. That's going to go over there. We're going to have an easement. It's not a roadway. It will not be a roadway in the future, just to make sure that's understood that we don't have the ability to do that down the road. And it's not going to be a building lot either, and there's going to be an easement um, in favor of the town for them to actually have that line to go forward to make sure that it actually is proper. And, but that's also a DPD, uh, DPW recommendation. Um, when they had the uh, the uh, our, uh, ART meeting a couple of months ago. Uh, the bank design um, fluctuated just a couple of weeks ago, so it's not in your package, so we apologize about that. But that's something that's been a little bit flexible, but we're very excited to have People's Bank. Um, they're very interested in coming. They want to be here. They want to be part of the community. And we asked where we normally you don't put a tenant's name on there, but they wanted to be part of the application, and they're looking forward to coming down as well. But I wanted to clarify, especially with the, uh, the drainage. I know David went over the drainage. That was something that was also a concern. So maintaining that and also making sure that the drainage has actually helped, not hurt. Nothing on our site goes off anywhere else. And anybody who actually has water coming in our area, there's a swale, so we can actually taper that in. We really try to be thoughtful and considerate to everything that people said in a long time. We've been up here a few times and making sure we understand this is a very impactful project. But we think we actually came up with something that's very workable as well. Thank you. Mary, you had one more question? Oh. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't, the location of the dumpsters, where are the dumpsters located on the property or where they're going to be located and yeah. um, snow stockpile areas, what about um, some of those we were trying to yeah, locate? Yeah, well, uh, always have trouble with this microphone. <laughs> For um, what, we're, what we're doing is, um, if you look on sheet uh, LA1, You'll see for, at this time we don't show a dumpster for the bank, because my experience is that banks don't like dumpsters. They deal with all of their internal trash and uh, don't, put, don't put anything else in dumpsters. If, if, the, if the documents need to be uh, thrown away, they're shredded and taken away. And their cleaning service cleans the building every day and removes their trash. So for instance, buildings two and three um, in the back corners, we have uh, enclosed uh, 10 by 12 concrete dumpster pads uh, shown back there. So they have individual dumpsters. And then um, on building four, there's one on each wing of the building that would be uh, enclosed dumpsters uh, for that building as well. So th 
by uh, by using you know some multiple locations, uh, it keeps down on large you know compactor dumpsters and large dumpster areas, and we're screening with the uh, with fencing, and we we've, we've put uh, you know lots of landscaping around them. That's why I was looking for the one for the first building. So now that because of being yeah. residents, everything. You no, know, right? Yeah, like that's, that was uh, really important to me. I, to I've see. done a lot of banks lately. I haven't put a dumpster at a bank in a long time, so. The United Bank building across the street does not have a dumpster pad for that same purpose, even way back when, when we did that a long time ago. The same Perfect. Purpose. Banks usually Thanks. have their cleaning service take care of it. Good. Thank you. In, in, in terms of your dumpsters, in terms of the hours of operation for the pickup and, you know, of a dumpster, again, I think that it, we always have a concern that they don't do an early morning pickup in a residential zone. So yeah. that goes without saying, but... I, you know, I, I would suggest you guys add that to your special permit conditions. Uh, you know, snow stockpile. A area. snow stockpile. Well, there's large areas now here behind this building for snow stockpile. Uh, they, the, the Wetlands Commission didn't have a problem where we where we placed it on site. They just didn't want us dumping it directly into the detention basins. So uh, yeah, we won't uh, we won't have a snow pile issue until and if we ever come back with more. You know, as, but right now we got a big area for snow. So I guess I'm going to ask you to, I'm going to open it up to the public. Absolutely. Thank you. Sorry. Anyone uh, in the public would like to speak in favor or against this? Um, do you have a, yeah, it's, a list? There's a, there's a oh, sign-in sheet. All right. A sign-in sheet. Everyone's on here. All right. And if I can read the writing, um, Douglas Oaks. Oh, that was of the okay. Um, Al and I can't. What would you say that is? It's me. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. So, so like it, might be it could like be an I, could be an E. So, uh, name and address, please. Name's Al Perrin. I live at Eight St. Thomas Street, right here in Enfield. Um, Have a seat. Congratulate you, uh, Mr. Prano. Good plan. Uh, but I still have a concern with it. Okay. The uh, <clears throat> and I can see that there's been a lot of effort. I'm the guy that's more concerned about the water. Um, if you look at this, uh, yes, the basin's very large. It's uh, actually two and a half times any of our property almost five times whatever the pond is that's back there. <laughs> so it's very large and it will collect all the water that's, that's uh, coming from the property that they're building is feeding that one basin. That's the only place it's going to drain and there's only one uh, exit to it to the pond. Uh, I own the property. If you look and we could use a map uh, if you go to EC1. And if you look to the right of the uh, property line there where it says water quality basin, that uppermost right corner, that's my property. So I'm very familiar with it. And about the each heavily rained uh, time of the year, May, water will collect in my backyard in about the first 20 feet. Okay, when I, I've lived there 39 years, I know why the person that had the property beforehand put his garden there. <laughs> he didn't have to put water there. Okay, so, and, and I'm concerned about, about the water. Now, I understand, I spent some time now with, with John, and thank John for talking to me today. I understand a little better over, over the plan. Um, so, this, there's two times that this basin presents issues to me. One is, when there's heavily rain, it can't possibly discharge all the water, and they know that. It's there to collect and reduce the runoff. So that water will be, at its highest moment, quite a bit of water. Now, while that water may not 
move over to my land or the other people's lands. It's drainage. It's seeping. The water table will come up. That's one of my concerns. I don't know what you do for it, but again, I'm concerned about that impacting and perhaps being a much more frequent because, again, I only get it during the heavy rains, and we haven't had that. This year we did, so I had it back there. Several years later, uh, earlier, it wasn't. But I've had it several times throughout the year, uh, throughout the time. And right now we have something that does nothing more than funnel it all to that one place. So I've got to believe that the water table is going to rise more frequently than it does right now. I don't know what you do for that. All I know is I don't want it in my cellar. <laughs> okay? That's one. Take all the water away now. And I know I can just hear what, what the next one is. <laughs> the water can never be gone totally. In fact, if you look at the, uh, just about the center of the, the paper, you'll see there's a little mound. Uh, the lowest level is 123 feet. Then it goes to 124 feet, that the, the, and then it goes back to 123 feet where the drain is. So one of those will have stagnant water. And the key word is stagnant water, which follows mosquitoes. My concern is that we're, we're, we will create a place for mosquitoes that we presently don't have, especially during times of the year when people tell us we, we don't want water in our gutters. <laughs> so I leave you with those two thoughts and ask you to see what you could do to help us with those. That, those, that, that's, that's my primary concern. Don't flood my basement. Don't let me have my garden. <laughs> and, and don't let the bugs eat me. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, Bob Cummings. Name and address, sir, please. <clears throat> Okay. Bob Cummings from 10 St. Thomas Street. Good evening. Uh, from, about the site itself, <clears throat> from the comments tonight, apparently there's just one committed tenant. When more tenants come in, do they have to come? Just, do they have to come before you for the special permit to occupy those buildings? That's a question. Uh, with regard to the approximately six acres of open space. Uh, presently zoned R33, uh, they, that open space resulted from the site zone change in 2016. Uh, it's unclear to me what the open space designation uh, commits the owners to do. In other words, can I understand he can't build any buildings on there, but can he use it for any other reason, like disposal of construction de debris or uh, when removing trees from the other part of the site or a crazy thing could he decide to use it as a mulch uh, generator and with regard to the open space I'd like to know if it has been offered to the town of Enfield at one time there was some talk about offering that to the town of Enfield uh, the question is has it been offered to the town of Enfield? And lastly, uh, does this open space commitment uh, transfer to the next owner or owners? Or is it just resident with the existing owners? Uh, regarding the traffic, there's been a lot said about the traffic uh, as a uh, uh, user of that part of Enfield. Uh, there are just long traffic lines that exist many hours of the day. And regardless of what the traffic uh, study shows, there's, they're now an inconvenience to the people of the town. And this, this part of uh, Elm Street, east of I-91, has been a concern for a long time. In your uh, town of uh, Enfield plan of conservation, Dave, 
uh, dated April 2011, there's a minor traffic concern about that part of Elm, of Elm Street even then. And of course, things have intensified since then. And probably the long-term traffic now is uh, lines are probably going to be increased by the Palumbo in and out site traffic signal modification. In other words, to allow that traffic to flow directly from Palumbo in and out of the site. And with regard to uh, the uh, second driveway, I heard some comments tonight about the second driveway, but they weren't clear and compelling as to why they need that second driveway with the exception of it was mentioned that it might be used as an emergency uh, driveway. And that hasn't been designated at all in any of the plans, and it's questionable whether the size of the uh, uh, driveway in and out could accommodate fire trucks, for example. So I think the commission ought to question more thoroughly, why do we need that second driveway and what is its real purpose? And right now, there's been a lot, there's been a lot of talk uh, tonight about uh, softening up the impact of this site development on the neighbors, and which is to the benefit of the developer. And right now, the eastern uh, side uh, site boundary is just a mixture of trees, brush, weeds, old broken wire fence, et cetera. In, in other words, it's not easy to identify and the, uh, site, the site outline is not clearly defined at this point, and I'm concerned about, uh, well, well-intended people going in to cut out <coughs> trees will take down some trees that should remain standing to help soften this effort. And so my request is that the site outline should be clearly marked before any clearing starts. And in terms of softening the, uh, the effect, particularly with regard to either line of sight or noise, I think the developer would make big, a big hit with the neighbors if uh, they would in increase the, the intensity of their plantings. In other words, rather than some bushes and shrubs which only grow to be about six feet high, if they would start out by planting six-foot arboretums, three feet on center down that whole eastern drive, uh, eastern uh, boundary, I think it would be uh, standing in good stead with, with those neighbors. And lastly, <clears throat> there's a dumpster located at the, well, dumpsters located at the east and uh, west end of uh, building number four, which placed them pretty close to the uh, neighbors. And now that the site building plans have changed and there's plenty of room to the north of that building, uh, that dumpster could perhaps be moved to the back of the building and get it away and farther away from the neighbors and all the noise that accompanies with the dumpsters and dumpster trucks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lori Woodson. Name and address, please. Uh, Lori Woodson, 7 Montclair Drive. A little closer to the mic. Okay. <laughs> You're on TV. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Lori Woodson, 7 Montclair uh, Drive. Um, I wanted to say um, to start that I commend the, the efforts on the changes. Um, I, I think it's definitely moving in the right direction. Um, I be kind of building off of what has already been previously said um, about some of the buffering type landscape. Um, I, I live on Montclair, so I have that, that six acre buffer in the back, um, along with some of my neighbors on St. Thomas and Carroll, um, which is useful. Um, but my question is how, one, how is that going to be left uh, to grow in? Um, nature is very good at filling itself in and maintaining itself over time. So if that is truly just a green open space, will it be left to its own devices? Um, there's plenty of that in town. Um, well, it's, we'll say there's plenty of wooded areas in town that self-maintain and 
Um, if that becomes a space like that, I think that would be good. Um, along the eastern and western portions of the developed space, um, I would also encourage uh, evergreen type plants, again, with the height and thickness. Um, it would offer a buffer for light and sound in the winter as well um, to make sure that we're not losing. Because I know that back section in the winter, um, we can see right through to Elm Street because most of it is deciduous. So once all the leaves clear, it's like a straight shot to Elm Street. So evergreen things would be helpful. Um, my One of my bigger concerns is um, the edging of that back um, six acres that abuts Montclair directly. Uh, I know there um, there is some maintenance uh, on the edging uh, for my neighbors that actually abut directly to the property, um, and there there are fences there, and there's some landscaping issues going on there. Um, in terms of that, I don't know, maybe it's 15 feet um, into that space. Uh, in terms of how that will be maintained moving forward or if it's going to be allowed to grow in. Um, two concerns for that was, I think, uh, the snow plows when it's full in up there. I don't know if they have issues moving the snow into that space. Um, secondly, and this is a concern that hasn't been brought up, uh, both for my area back there um, and my neighbors up here, more concerning for them directly abutting the property. Um, I have witnessed probably th three times now, um, people not of my neighborhood coming up Montclair and walking through the field. Uh, so I don't know that people, I've, I'm not really, they're not from my neighborhood, I haven't really seen them before, suddenly seems to be a walking path. I don't know if they're cutting to Elm Street, I don't know if there's squatters in the house at the moment, to be honest, um, which I believe is empty. Um, but I, it's something that I have not seen. I've lived there for f almost 15 years, and I've never seen people just walk down the street and walk through the field before. Um, if you think green greenery and uh, berms would keep people from cutting through or cutting across, I think that would be a little naive. Um, I don't know if it's because people know that this pro the property is a sort of not abandoned, but open at the moment, not being lived in or used, that they're finding it's uh, a free space to walk or not. Um, so I don't know if there's anything that can be addressed. There used to be a fence um, at the end of Montclair, and that, I think it more or less broke down. It was removed, if that's something to go into. Um, I would consider, particularly for these people that directly abut the property, um, and then last uh, was the the intersection. Just two quickies. Um, would that also include the crosswalks and signals to cross Palumbo, which don't exist now at that intersection? Um, and the second drive with the, t the right in, right out, one way passageway. Um, I, I think we all know that the five guys <laughs> across the street, how many accidents happen there because people don't want to only turn right out of the space and they try to turn left onto Elm and craziness. So I don't know if, the, if that's a, how that, that second exit will, will work, but to keep that in mind. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Rich, I, I'm not sure. Is that a G? <laughs> Is that a G? Uh, okay. Garini? Sorry. <laughs> We're not sure. Sounds like Garini. <laughs> it, okay. <clears throat> Name and address, sir, please. Uh, Rich Garini, 8 Carroll Street. <coughs> I came here with a list as long as my arm. And I'm happy to say that many of the, the, the points that I needed clear, cleared up have been cleared up since the last meeting. Uh, some of those due to changes that Frank has made, um, which has been a big help. I've been there. <laughs> I've been at that address as a 
first street, first house built there on that street. So it's 60 or 61. And um, perhaps no, Virginia may or be able to reach somewhere near there. Uh, there have been different things that have come up that have changed the property. The first thing, um, the Bizonets took the property at one point and they started to remove topsoil and it was sold to Pilch. And I called Town Hall and they immediately stopped that because they didn't have a permit to remove the topsoil. But what it has done, or did at that point, it creates an area where the water now settles from, and again, I'm on the west side, be, behind my fence and the property. So the water settles there. That area that the water s seems to settle sounds like the area that's going to be that I hear 35 feet wide and take you down to the one pond that's going to take all this water. Is this the same area where these emergency quote unquote trucks are going to circle the area? Are they going to drive over this area that's supposed to move the water? Is it one and the same? The area were one and the same? No, the, the, the 35 feet is actually a, a landscape buffer area. And then the driveway is, on, you know, to the east of that, that landscaped area. To the east of that landscape Correct. area. Correct. So, so it's, it's, the, the driveway is actually further away, and the trucks will actually be going down a paved driveway. It will be a controlled paved driveway. Okay, very good. As long as it's to the east, I'm happy. Correct. Okay, that one area that... Um, Frank mentioned, I guess he's turned over to the state or the town. No houses can be built on. Uh, that's always been a big concern. And the concern for that was that when I bought my property, I was told that was the right of way to the biggest piece and would always be a right of way. I don't really care at this point as long as we're not going to build something there or have cars going behind uh, behind my house. I'm, I'm not really concerned other than it's a little confusing. Okay. Big question, uh, the question that I do have that I will leave with is with the lighting. Um, my folks used to live at where the Volkswagen places now. One of the problems that was that was there before my mom sold the property was that the lighting could be such that it's basically coming in my back windows or all of those houses on the west side of the development would not appreciate having lights in my back window in the middle of the night. Other than that, um, I can understand where it's time that property be used for something. If I own the property, I would want to recoup some value from it. Uh, I'm not really pleased about it, but been there since 60, so I guess I have to live with it. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia, name and address, please. Yes. I'm Patricia Jones, 159 Elm Street. Um, I am very happy to see what's developed since the last meeting. Um, my biggest concerns, <coughs> excuse me, are the two V's, vagrants and vermin. Um, the dumpster situation, I think you all are ironing that out pretty well. Um, I didn't like seeing that the dumpsters were towards the properties, but I think that you'll be able to move that to the back area better. Um, my concern is, and I, maybe I just missed something, um, 
with the type of zoning if there's going to be food service establishments allowed here and if so that concerns me because of the vermin and the smells um and there is a problem with vagrants in town i'm sure you all know and they are starting to congregate in that area maybe it's because the big white house is empty um so my concern is that spilling over to our neighborhoods and if maybe better fencing or maybe police patrol once this is developed something to protect us from them panhandling and hanging out in the grassy areas by the pond etc i know if i was a vagrant person that would look pretty darn good for a hangout spot um otherwise um i think everything looks fairly good i i again i'm i'm not liking the idea of a food service establishment of any kind right literally in my backyard i mean five guys is bad enough the smells and all from there pretty bad when you're trying not to eat that stuff um other than that great um the atm situation i know they're coming up with a more silent type of keypads and that would probably take care of that problem um so i think if we just be patient that'll be fine and then my mother wanted me to bring up the traffic that there have been fatal accidents right in front of our house and i think mr troiano had assured me at one time that there is going to be a better situation once this is developed with that so i'm going to hold him to that <laughs> and hope for the best so thank you for your time and um how do i find out if there's going to be food service establishments will there be a special use permit hearing or it that's you uh the food service is permitted by site it plan it's not a public hearing it is permitted yes great um so that i don't like that i would really hope that you would be sympathetic to the people that live there and try to find other tenants thank you uh can i ask you one quick question because it uh, me been yes just sure. because it's been brought up twice about people hanging out yeah has anyone have you or your mother called the police about these people in the area I, i'm i'm just yeah. saying are because if it's not brought to their attention right. they aren't going to know about it it can't be everywhere that's why I'm yeah no i personally have not no but there have been other people in the neighborhood that have right. um Right, I so know. that they are aware of it that's you know I they've got to be with everything that's been said um I know on the Enfield public forum website where people like to blow off their steam I know there's a lot of that going on no, <laughs> back I'm, and forth about that but I'm just I just want to make sure that, yeah you know I'm glad that you're I'm glad that, right. that that made an impact on you so you remember that concern so thank you thank you okay anyone else like to speak Name and address, sir. Dan Blasco, uh, 6 St. Thomas, adjacent property. Um, I just wanted to start off with saying this is a much better plan than when we started uh, six years ago, I guess, maybe longer since I've been there. Um, but it is a lot better, so I do appreciate everybody's efforts. Um, my list is also shorter, thanks to a lot of the concerns you guys already brought up, the bank positioning and, and things like that, some drainage stuff was all covered i think he was being generous earlier about the 20 feet i've seen it come halfway up the back backyard before so um just please take that into consideration um the only general other topics i wanted to cover was we had talked in previous meetings regarding the rezoning about the traffic in out of st thomas and i didn't hear anything in this particular meeting regarding turning left and turning into st thomas and left out of st thomas we talked about traffic going west we didn't really talk about anything going east, and there has been uh, actually the backup while bad turning left going westbound on the Palumba. That backup actually creates openings for people to stop so you can get in and out of St. Thomas. So while adding additional lanes might make it easier in and out of the new facility, it could create more problems for St. Thomas. So um, I just would like to have that included in the traffic study if it's not already, because there has been several significant accidents because of that. And uh, I know we can kind of pitch down and go around Dorothy and all the way around, but in the winter with the big hill, it gets really icy and that's a little worrisome as well. Um, 
So uh, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget because it was very good. Um, oh, I did have the people walking on the property as well. Not so much um, anybody squatting or anything like that, but just in general, the, the, this nice facility goes in, people cutting through our properties to get to it if there's shops that people want to be a part of. So there is fencing sporadically throughout the properties and there is holes. Um, I know there's a pretty decent buffer of um, trees and brush, but teenagers will walk right through that. So um, I don't really want people in my backyard either uh, with my young daughter playing. So um, please take that in consideration. I don't know if there's anything we do about fencing and you know piling that in there. Um, nice, my phone stopped locking every two seconds. Um, then with regards to it was mentioned that there's one vendor the bank and that bank's been around maybe it's a different version of the bank but since our first discussions earlier um it's just a general concern of it sounded like originally we we're talking about 61,000 total square feet of building and now it's up to like 71 or 74,000 square feet across all the buildings um is that the right quantity it is a good plan that it is laid out i just wanted to express um that wall it's a lot closer to the road and it is better it is a lot of square footage and uh, i do worry about vacant buildings for uh, extended periods of time but that's my items so thank you for listening to your time anyone else like to come on. name and address please <coughs> Hello, uh, Wendy Steer, 24 Carroll Street. Um, I would like to readdress the concern Mary raised. Um, the site of the uh, ATM and the um, drive-in banking, quite honestly, that generates a lot of traffic. I personally go to Webster Bank. I found it's easier to park in the lot and go in the bank than it is to wait in line because the line can be so long. Um, that's just not a good situation. I've lived at that property since 1969, and I remember very well the nursery that was located there, and it was a very low-volume business. It was not nearly the, the volume of business that you'd have in, in outer, outside banking. Um, let's see. Also, I, I share the concern of the previous speaker regarding food service. Uh, food can generate a lot of smells. Outdoor dining can attract people who tend to just sit at the tables for an extended time, even people who aren't customers. So, you know, it is a, an issue of loitering and smells. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Karen LaPlante, Enfield Conservation Commission, and I am representing the Conservation Commission tonight. Address, please. Now, 166 North Maple Street. Um, I'd like to read these into the record. Um, the Enfield Conservation Commission reviewed the plans for the above project and would like to submit the following comments. ECC would like to confirm the current plans showing the open space agrees with the originally approved plan. ECC requests a maintenance plan for the open space be included as part of this application. It is important this, op this open space be managed by the owner. ECC is particularly concerned with the introduction of invasive species and requests the developer take special care to control and eradicate any existing or new growth as part of the maintenance plan. The landscape plan has many large trees, including maples and elms, located within small islands within the parking lot. ECC questions if this is an appropriate place for these large canopy trees. Some of these islands appear to be as small as only eight feet in width. 
ECC would like to see a more, a more diverse selection of large canopy trees in the landscape plan. 36% of the trees are varieties of maple trees. We know what happened to the ash. ECC would like to see more elm trees in the planting, possibly on Elm Street, within the tree belt where possible. Some of the water quality basin features appear to be different from an earlier plan, including the location and the number of stone check dams and the size or the outlet. Um, the page LS1 shows the note exist quote existing tree to be to remain be removed unquote could the developer clarify if those trees will be removed or remain this is in a number of locations along elm street um, between the main entrance and the right turn only entrance um, ECC would like to suggest underground electric service to the complex so any trees along the tree belt will not conflict with any overhead power lines and therefore have to be cut in the future and maimed by the uh, power company. Um, there were some of the things that were brought up tonight that were of concern, um, but a lot of people spoke about them already. Um, the, the swale. Uh, I don't know how that's going to be maintained, if that's going to run water off the property. Is it going to be mowed? I believe it's, if I can remember properly, the grass seed that's going to be in that swale is not a wetland mix, um, but that you guys could check that. Um, but other than that, I, I can't think of what the other things were. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, loading and unloading zones. I don't know. You haven't mentioned that at all for all these property, all these, you know, things. Nothing was mentioned where trucks are going to load and unload. I know it was a big concern at one of your more recent meetings. Anyone else like to speak? Anyone else? One more time. Anyone else like to speak? Hearing none. Um, would you like to come back and address any of these concerns? Thank you. Um, first, let me say, obviously, we appreciate comments from the, the neighbors and, and obviously in terms of how we over the past couple of years has wor worked on and devised the plan. We, we've tried to be sensitive to, to their concerns. Um, there's a couple, there's some technical things that I think Dave would, would speak to with regard to drainage and water tables and that sort of thing. A um, couple of things I wanted to talk about quickly. Um, one is the open space. Um, obviously our special use permit plan shows it is designated open space. Once you approve the plan, and once you approve it as a special use permit, it is, it's part of the permit. It's part of what's recorded. It will run with the land records. Um, we certainly have no problem working with staff to design some sort of restrictive covenants if, if the commission think that's necessary. Our basic intent at this point is to do some um, minimal maintenance on the open space um maybe mow a few areas of it i think you were thinking frank and you might am amplify that but other than that is to sort of let it become passive strictly passive open space in terms of people accessing it um my guess is they probably are accessing accessing it probably from montclair at this point you know because it's a, a public it's a public road and you sort of use it as a cut through obviously once this develops that that's going to change dramatically. Um, it's no longer really available as a cut through. I mean, there's businesses operating there. Um, it'll obviously be fairly well monitored um, and so forth. So that that problem will, it seems to me, will self correct. Um, and if it doesn't, um, we would address it in some way. I know Frank was thinking of doing some some work up towards the Montclair area. Maybe you can clarify that. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, I think all of that can be addressed. I did also want to touch, I don't know if Dave does, on the the issue of the, the drive-through, which is mentioned by the commission. 
not going to move them unless mentioned by them. members of the public. We think um, we can take some of those comments in in context and do some revision. One is as, as you as one of the commissioners suggested, maybe lower the profile of the canopy so that sort of it's it's not as high and it doesn't therefore allow sound to travel. Another is to as Dave suggested, increase the and put a berm in that area and increase the plantings a bit so that we come to a point where we're, we're pretty much sheltering that um, from the one abutting house there, um, which is really the one impacted. Um, and perhaps that can be a condition of approval for, for staff review. And if obviously if it needs to come back here because we're, we're sort of at loggerheads with staff, we can do that. Um, I know Dave wanted to address, I think, some of the comments with regard to I think there were several comments on drainage and I think it's, a, it's important that we sort of address those in the basins I'll let you do that Dave okay and, and maybe the traffic or we can have Scott do the yeah, traffic yeah we'll have uh, Scott talk about the traffic yeah, just so we don't get okay. feedback yeah. hmm. um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Perrin it lives at uh, 8 St. Thomas Street I was listening to his comments and um, uh, what I would what I would suggest happen is that uh, as far as the drainage in his his backyard that he may be experiencing, I I will visit with Mr. Parent and find out what the heck is going on and make sure that there's nothing that we're doing that's going to you know worsen that situation. Hopefully we can we can solve it. Um, as far as the the design of the detention basin, it does have pockets of uh, wet bottom that was worked out with the Wetlands Commission. What we're going to do is on, on the bottom of the basin, we're going to have, um, uh, we're going to apply a layer of uh, basically impervious almost uh, topsoil, silty topsoil at the bottom, which prevents that water from seeping down into the groundwater. It's very effective. We've done this many, many times. And I, I often heard for many years the worries about the stagnant uh, water in these basins. Well, these basins become an enormous habitat all, all into themselves. They're very successful in doing that. And what, that, what they draw is they'll draw lots of uh, frog populations and bird populations and things of that nature, which uh, mosquitoes uh, don't get along with very well. So I, I've, never, I've put detention basins successfully in very intense residential developments all over, including the town of Enfield. Never had a mosquito problem with them. If anything, the mosquitoes have a tendency to die off because other critters who like to eat mosquitoes like wet bottom detention basins. So it's kind of an interesting. It's been studied for for many many years, and, and uh, it's it's really not going to be an issue. But um, I don't believe we're going to have any issues with with you know impacts to any of the neighbors. But um, Mr. Parent came forward to this evening. He's expressed concerns, and I will make it a personal uh, pledge that we will be contacting him soon. And uh, we will, you know, integrate him into the plan, so to speak. You know, cool. along those lines, do you have any boring plans that you did? Do, did you do any borings to figure out exactly what the soils might be and where the groundwater table really is in terms of, you know, if the groundwater table is down 20 feet, you know, your, your detention basin isn't going to make any difference at all. If the groundwater table is really down three feet, and you're cutting five feet into the, you know, the groundwater, you know, a yeah. five foot depression for your detention base and then obviously you're just you're going to intercept that, that that groundwater table so you know obviously it would be beneficial to know exactly where that ground table would be and possibly when you're doing your site you know renovations or you're you're, you're remolding you know the, the platform for the new you know use that you know you you have an idea of what you're going to encounter when you get there you know I, ideally you know Enfield is just like a sandy you know silty material so yeah. you know it's, it should be fairly porous but you know obviously once you start hitting the groundwater table you, you have no place to go yeah I, I based upon the we haven't done a formal boring uh, plan but based upon the uh, historical soil tables uh, you know uh, uh, data for this area and, and my experience in working out throughout this whole commercial area we're going to be seasonally in groundwater probably about four feet. Um, so uh, again, one of the benefits of, people will argue this, but one of the benefits of putting commercial developments in is it definitely drops the groundwater table uh, long term. Because uh, when you have large open areas uh, that are flat, you know, rainfall transfers 
directly into groundwater elevations pretty quickly because it has nowhere else to go. It, it just falls through and gets into the groundwater. Whereas when you have a large impervious areas and everything, you have a tendency to cut that mechanism off and direct it to where you want it to go. So many, many times I've seen we build commercial properties and it actually lowers the groundwater table in the entire area, and I think that's what's going to happen here. So again, I don't have any concerns with, uh, with uh, causing impacts to the neighbors. I think we'll actually be able to improve it a bit with the swales we have proposed and the, a very positive outfall from the site that doesn't exist now. And, and at least with that one particular property owner, we'll, we'll, we'll give him a special you know, t attention since uh, he's obviously expressed concerns. Um, other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the second drive. There was a couple of comments regarding that. We really think that's important. Um, your traffic safety officer didn't have a, a big issue with it, and we don't think the state will either. Um, it, it's just very uncomfortable for me from a professional point of view to have only one access point into a site. Um, we could develop too many, other, too many scenarios where that's not a great idea. Um, and, and, and one of them is, uh, I would just assume for any tractor trailers that come into the site to do deliveries, to, to allow them, they're going to go back to the highway. So uh, this is going to give them a nice, easy way to get back out to the highway without coming down our nice driveway and clogging up that area, sitting in there with the other cars. Um, and God forbid there's an accident in our driveway the police and the ambulances and things need a secondary way to get in there and this is this is what does that so and it's and it's restricted i i understand there was one comment made about five guys but that's the only way in and out of five guys um, i'm not a big fan of right in right right in right out driveways when it's the only way to get in and out of a site because there's a lot of cheaters out there we, we get it we all know we've all seen the cheaters um, uh, there, there's a few identifying themselves for the public record, but uh, um, but this, but at least, at least uh, this is not the primary driveway in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this is a secondary driveway, and I think we should, I think we should let it be. Um, and uh, let me see if I have anything else I wanted to say. Um, the dumpsters on Building Four. Yeah, um, you know, if the, if the commission feels strongly about that, we can look at other options. But, um, I mean, they're going to be well shielded and, and landscaped, and they're there, and they're, you know, they're there. You know, uh, I think if you want to restrict the operations, probably a, a better way to address that than thinking moving it 50 feet in one direction or the other is going to make a difference, you know. So I think it's better to do it in an, since it's a special permit, you can put any operations restrictions you want on there. So I would suggest you do that. Um, and as far as the selection of trees, I mean, our, our landscape architect, Ken LaForge, has been landscaping these kinds of facilities for 30 years. I think he's done a good job in selecting materials. Um, and uh, I, I don't have any concerns with that. There is, um, we don't like, we like uh, various different species on sites because there are diseases floating around. So that's why there's so many different types of evergreens proposed and, and, and deciduous, uh, you know, canopy trees. Maple is a very hardy tree. I haven't seen one really die yet. Uh, I've seen a lot of the specialty trees that don't do very well, but uh, maples are not one of them. And um, as far as the buffer goes, if you look at the, at the plans, I know this, the, I don't expect the public to, to review our landscaping plans and even understand them. Uh, that's, that's not reasonable. But um, uh, if you look at, at the planting plans, there's a really extensive evergreen uh, planting along both sides, and there's a wide mix of evergreens. Our initial uh, installation would be six to seven feet, which is nursery grown. Um, those trees can grow 30, 40 feet high very quickly. So uh, I, I really think we've got enough plant material. You get to the situation, we've actually had situations where commissions have asked us or conditioned us to add more plant materials, and that's almost self-defeating, because what happens is there's only so much, you know, you can, there's only so many evergreen trees you can plant in an area before within a few years they start really competing with each other, and then all of a sudden they go sour on you 
because they don't grow really well. Did you ever go to an old Christmas tree farm, you know, like that hasn't been cut in a long time? You start to see the trees around them start to have trouble. They need spacing and they need, you know, in order to really succeed and grow. So I've been involved in this where we just keep stuffing plant material in and it, and it kind of looks good for a short period of time. And then all of a sudden after a couple years, it starts going sour on you because they start killing each other and they start in, being in competition with each other. So I would just ask you to have confidence that we know what we're doing and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to look really, really good. And also, you know, there's, there's the practicality of the matter is if we have to come back in here for other special permits or add in the additional areas that we have, you guys are going to be sitting there holding us accountable for anything that we haven't done well the first, the first time around. So again, I would, I would just ask you to have confidence in, in the way we've laid this thing out. It's gonna, it's, I really feel strongly it's going to work, and it's going to work really well. Because I, I guess there's a couple of other things that I, I would like you to address, and, and I guess one of the gentlemen was uh, was wondering if there was a study, the traffic study included the access to, I guess, St. Thomas, the in and outs of in St. Thomas, and how difficult it was to, to utilize that street access. So um, I'd like to see that addressed. And another one is the, the loading dock. Uh, the loading issues in terms of how you're going to get your supplies into the building. I notice at the back of the buildings, there's a lot, a significant grade change. There's, you know, a four or five foot sometimes grade change in the back. So, I guess all the loading of, of all the, the you know the upper level of stores is going to have to occur from the front of the store. And you know, could you sort of address that? As far as the, lo Sorry. As far as the loading goes, particularly on the front two buildings, is really the only concern. Is we're looking at that. That's going to be, um, we're looking at the possibility of changing the grading a little bit back there. It's going to be tenant driven, sort of. Where's, where's, how are the tenants going here? If it's going to be one tenant in the whole building, we have a little less concern. If it's going to be multiple tenants, um, we're going to try to avoid putting any kind of ramping back there. So we may mess with the grading in that back parking lot there. But we're, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have that issue uh, worked out. But we've, we've designated spaces on, for, for each building as a, as, de as a designated loading area. Um, the big building in the back is at grade. The bank isn't a concern. So it's really only the two front buildings. And again, we're going to wait and see how that's tenant driven. If it's multiple tenants, we're going to change the grading in that back parking lot a little bit. Yeah, especially with handicap parking in terms of, you know, that's a good Oh, that's all worked out. That's not an issue. Yeah, we've got, we've got, it, we've got that all worked out to make sure that works right. And there are no steep parking areas in the parking lot at all. We'll let Scott answer the traffic questions. I. Good evening. Whoops. Let's make sure this is on. Good evening. For the record, my name is Scott Hesketh. I'm a licensed engineer in the state of Connecticut with the firm of F.A. Hesketh and Associates. And we did write a traffic report dated April 11, 2019, which is part of the application. Uh, in terms of the access at uh, St. Thomas Street, uh, Route 220 in this area across the site frontage is currently two lanes in each direction. And the intersection of uh, Route 220 and Palumba Drive is operated by a traffic signal. Uh, what we're proposing to do is to widen the uh, Route 220 to provide opposing left turn lanes in each direction so that we have a, a place for left turning vehicles to wait uh, while there's a gap in the opposing traffic stream in order to make a left hand turn in. We'll also modify the traffic signal to allow advanced left turn lane phase so that the first 10 or 15 seconds of the cycle, left turns will be able to go unopposed and we can clear out a lot of traffic uh, in that way. Now, Route 220 um, to the west of us is a five lane roadway. It has a left turn lane in the eastbound direction for Freshwater Boulevard. As you get to the um, as, as you get to the east of St. Thomas, there's another left turn lane which is added for the uh, Asnantuck Community College and the five guys uh, as well. So when we do the widening for our left turn lane, we will have a, a additional uh, width in front of St. Thomas Street. We are installing or we will be painting a short section of left turn lane for traffic to enter that street as well. Um, that's it's going to provide a little safety 
a little opportunity for left turns, a safe place for them to wait while waiting a gap in the traffic uh, in the traffic stream. Um, unfortunately, there's not a high volume of traffic into and out of the street. Uh, it's too close to other signalized intersections, so that the roadway itself couldn't be signalized, uh, even if we wanted to. Uh, and we're not proposing that, but we should provide a little bit of uh, additional capacity uh, and safety for people getting in, uh, at least into into that roadway. And hopefully with the improvements of this uh, location, we'll shorten up the queues just a little bit and maybe we'll make it easier for people to get out of that roadway during peak hours as well. So um, that's our response to the traffic question. Again, we've done a, a, a full impact study. You, you have it. Uh, we looked at background traffic, site generated traffic volumes, capacity analysis. We've reviewed the site distances, uh, accident data. Um, one of the things about our intersection, uh, the accidents which are occurring at that location are two kinds, rear end accidents and there's a lot of side swipe same direction accidents. Uh, the rear end accidents are typical at signalized intersections. The side swipe same direction accidents are the people that uh, Mr. Zayax talked about. You're in that left lane and the guy in front of you wants to turn left, you realize I don't want to turn left. You swerve to the right to get around them, and you sideswipe the guy going past you in, the, in, in that lane. So we hope with the addition of the left turn lane at this location, we should see a reduction in those types of accidents, and hopefully uh, maybe a slight reduction in the uh, rear end type accidents as well. So although we're adding additional traffic to the intersection, these improvements should uh, provide a, a better operational uh, effectiveness and uh, improved level of safety at the intersection. Mary? Uh, just a quick question. I, one of the, um, will this be, have a crosswalk and basically that, you know, you know, the little button pushing and everything for people to walk across? <clears throat> yes. Um, b because the intersection currently has mast arm signals out there, we're going to end up replacing all the traffic signal equipment there. Um, we will be proposing, uh, um, well, if the town so desires and the state allows, um, we will have, uh, uh, crossings here. We've, we're proposing um, crosswalks. Typically when you have crosswalks you want them to be uh, pedestrian uh, exclusive, the exclusive pedestrian phases. So somebody can walk up, push the button, all the vehicles at the intersection will be stopped and there'll be a countdown signal nowadays and people crossing the intersection can do so on a countdown signal. We think that's probably the most appropriate way to do it. It will steal a little bit of capacity from the intersection, but it will provide uh, uh, an extra level of safety for, for pedestrians. Um, and there'll be crosswalks in, uh, on three of the legs of the intersection. Um, see, it's the most appropriate. Yeah, across Palumba Drive, across the one side, across Route uh, uh, 220, and across the site driveway as well. Jenny? I have two thoughts. It's not on the traffic, but just before I forget about them again. The uh, dumpsters, maybe I missed this, but uh, first of all, I want to say how nice it was that you took most of the concerns of the citizens to heart because they live there and Elm Street has gotten a lot, lot busier. But the dumpsters, I'd like, did anybody address limiting the time for the dumpsters to be picked up? In other words, a set time? We, we can't haven't come at two set o'clock? that yet. We okay. There. We haven't gotten there. Okay. And the <laughs> other thing is, um, some of us remember the Creck School Berm issue and <laughs> Connecticut Mulch. And um, if you look at page, 113, you'll see that the berms can't be more than three to five feet in height, and they give you the maximum three to one. So I heard six feet mentioned, and I, you know, I'm not going to quibble about a foot, but I just would hate to see you guys put it in and then somebody else come along and say, ah, we had to take, uh, the town had to take Crick to court to get him to lower the berm. So, you don't want a 23-foot berm. I'm sure the neighbors don't either, but just in case. Well, it really depends upon where you measure the berm. So, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll meet the regulations, but there might be areas that uh, are a little taller. But we'll, we'll cleverly just remember, disguise remember, 23 the, uh, feet, 60 feet. <laughs> well, no, 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 yeah. Yeah. no, no, there's nothing more ugly than a 20-foot dirt berm in front of your property, so. <laughs> Thank you. 
Madam Chair, since we're on berms, can I just mention sure. something? So um, will there be a watering system on these berms at all? Because I've seen berms put in and the plants are dead within six to nine months, especially uh, the hemlocks. Yeah, I, I think we're going to maintain it for the time frame it's needed to be done. If we have to replace them, we will. But there's no irrigation system that's actually for that entire side. But we will make sure we're responsible for it to make sure it maintains that way because obviously we want to maintain it for the integrity of the property itself anyways. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple more if you want me to volunteer a few more. Sure. And I, I, I'll be the first one to say I appreciate all the comments from the public myself. Thank you for saying so. Um, and I appreciate what they said about we've been very uh, accommodating to some degree. Um, it's not always easy, but there's always a way. And if you have enough time, you try to figure things out. So let me go through a few people that I've met over the years. And needless to say, I, I could probably hit a few people directly. Um, Mr. Guarini, thank you for your comments. I appreciate it. Um, no, there's nothing going on in Carroll Street. It will not. And we're going to have that be part of, I believe, our restricted access. Yeah. And we'll make sure it's actually um, recorded such. Uh, same thing with the back area where the conservation area is. Um, I've also met on multiple occasions with the two last people that uh, Ms. Woodson mentioned. I've also met with Ms. Woodson over time as well. Um, and I appreciate that as well because we did talk about that. Um, Ms. Estrada and Mr. O'Brien, uh, I just met with them last week again just to make sure we had an understanding. Um, they are the last two and the only two on the very end. Um, this property has, because of the way it's been mowed and the way it's been maintained over time, it actually produces a hay-like substance that depending on when it germinates and when you cut it, ends off puddling up and then running over, you'd be at their fences, their trees, and right down Montclair on these big dust bowls. I mean, it's a, it, you can't call them dust bunnies. You can't call them tumbleweeds. They are much bigger. Um, and because of that, we actually talked about how do we want to have it maintained. So um, in, in a conversation with them, they do have fences on either side. There's a small horse fence that used to be there that we just removed because it was unsightly and it was damaged anyways. We're going to be putting a line of arborvitae that we're going to break up that one look, but also it's going to stop other people from thinking there's actually a, a, an area there you can congregate. That's number one. We're going to put it back a little bit so we encourage the town to have DPW when they're pushing snow to push it on that area of the property because they also have icing, which nobody has mentioned, but that's something that we talked about ourselves. So it's actually not going to be right up against the edging of the property and the curbing. It'll be something that we can actually go so you can actually have a snow stockpile from the town naturally bring it out there. And they had some ponding issues in the back end of, of Montclair that uh, I think would be very helpful. Uh, in addition to that, in talking to those two neighbors, um, we, we came up with an idea that we, we think would be very helpful. Since we have a, a conservation easement there, we didn't want to mow the whole area at all times. They actually had the same concerns that were mentioned here today, that they, some of it grown in is actually a positive thing in the sense that it'll maintain itself. And it may not be the type of trees perfectly to have a wall, but you're talking about 400 plus feet from Montclair just to the back area of the of the conservation area. You're talking about a very long area. We talked about maybe cutting the first 75 or 100 feet and maintaining that once or twice a year and cutting. So number one, it takes away those tumbleweed effects, but also to make sure that they also have that little bit of a depth that they would appreciate having that they've always had for such a long time. And we do the same thing on the western, on the eastern side, you know, to maybe a, a smaller area, but there's nice growth that's already there, but we'll maintain an open area to just kind of you know, chop that area down a little bit and make sure it's maintained. But growing in the center is one thing that they wanted to do also to make sure that there was nothing the way they can't see that development. We think that would also prevent people from walking through. It would stop people from thinking that it's even allowed by planting the trees in the front anyways. And then, of course, maintaining it and having it be more often where people are watching it. I think it'll be a little bit more clear for everybody that it should not be something they do. We're also going to post no trespassing signs, which would be appropriate anyways. Um, it was earlier mentioned that somebody wanted to know who's going to own it. Um, that we approached the town many months ago. Um, it was supposed to be private ownership. The town does not want to have to maintain it. They don't want to have the expense to the budget. And they want to make sure that we're responsible. So. All those things that kind of, it's on our shoulders, like it or not, but the town's going to enforce it on our shoulders, as we will too, and, and Paul actually writes up for the conservation <laughs> easement and have that be accomplished as well. Um, above the houses and, and you know, any kind of vagrants, um, we, we've had a very nice relationship with both the, uh, the fire departments in town and the police departments, be it the state police, be it the, um, uh, the corrections officers. They like to have real-world environments. So once they do their training that we've offered the properties for, uh, there's nobody living in the house, there's no vagrants there now. We, maybe people would walk through and 
I think David mentioned, once that gets built up, that's not going to happen in the future. Once we grow in the center, that's not going to happen anymore. But also when we take the houses down, it's really going to open it up and really there's not going to be any purpose for anybody to be there. And then having us maintain it you know, responsibly and repeatedly, I think that'll actually be something that would probably solve that problem very quickly and, and probably in an appropriate way. Um, it was also mentioned earlier, and uh, Mr. McGreeny, he mentioned as well, uh, Mr. Greeny doesn't want any lights in his yard, and we actually made it a point that there are no wall packs on these buildings on the sides, in the back. And so even at Montclair, you can't see a little star in the back there from a building light. It's all going to be, as David mentioned, the lighting plan is actually going to be focused down. These LEDs are amazing what you can actually do for measurement on the light pollution that would have otherwise been there. So we didn't even want to have that be part of it as well. So we really tried to think about those details before we even got to you to make sure it's not even part of the plan that we have to do a modification for. Um, I, I think I got most of the ones that I, I was supposed to hit. Um, I know we were all talking back and forth on a few things. Um, let me see what I got real quick here. Uh, second drive where you covered. Uh, the designation for the open space, as I mentioned, that is going to be our responsibility, and we will maintain that ourselves. Uh, but again, I, we did meet with the neighbors on, on that point multiple times, and they seem to think that would be a better way to handle it and making sure that the big field that's out there now that causes all that extra blow over growth uh, would be eliminated completely on a year-round basis, not just during that one time. So I think we've tried to hit everything. I think we got it, unless I missed something. But again, I wanted to tell everybody again that I appreciate all the comments here and also in the public. Madam Chair, I have one more question. In terms of when, when we mentioned fencing between, you know, I guess your property and adjacent residences, in terms of is there going to be anything that's going to prevent, you know, we're, we're going to have 279 parking lot spaces, and, you know, in, in terms of, you know, in that front south southern part of, of the, 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 I guess, land. And, you know, is there going to be anything that's going to prevent anybody from, like, walking from the parking lot directly into their property? You know, it, is there going to be some deterrent that's going to, you know, prevent that from happening? And, you know, because sometimes, you know, it, it might be sort of a, a cedar mulch or some kind of a mulch that says, you know, okay, you know, th this is where, you know, the, the, the delineation from, you know, retail area to residential area occurs. And, you know, and again, you know, I'm not saying that there's going to be a lot of, you know, it's like if you're having a picnic in your backyard and it's a Saturday afternoon and there's a lot of cars and everything, you know, going there that, you know, and somebody, you know, you, you don't want to have, you, you want your privacy. You know, you don't want to have the, the possibility of, of, you know, anybody actually coming into your yard from, you know, the, the adjacent property sure. dur during those periods of time. You know, yeah, I, I think on most of the property, there's going to be a berm. First of all, somebody's going to have to cross, they're going to noticeably walk across a berm through the bushes that we have that are zigzagged all the way almost across the property. There's, you know, I, I was writing down with David because even I forgot how many trees we're talking about. We're planting 378 just trees not the underbrush, not the lower bushes we have. You know, there's an amazing amount of greenery on this property. In the back, they're going to have to cross the, the wetlands detention area or the, the water retention, uh, detention area. And they're going to be walking through that. They're going to go through that one way or the other. And most everybody already has a fence that's there. But I appreciate what you said because I think they're going to have to knowingly do this. And if they knowingly do this, I'm not sure how to prevent them from doing something they shouldn't be walking through somebody's backyard anyways. Yeah. But there certainly will be a dividing line where our property or, or that development will be there. And if they're going to be doing something that they should not be doing, I, I'd love to know how to stop that on any property that we have. Um, that would be something that's there. But they're knowingly not going to go there by accident if they want to look at it that way. Yeah, and, it, and it's one of those kind of things where, you know, I, I guess what we don't want to do is put, put an added burden on the residences if, if all of a sudden they feel threatened that, you know, there's, you know, a possibility. I, I don't feel as secure. You know, before it used to be all open space. Now there's a driveway there. There's cars running back there. And, and you know, I can't do my sunbathing or whatever I want to do in my backyard. You know, and, and it's, you know, and again, it's one of those kind of things where, you know, people, some people like to do that. And, and right now, this, there's nothing to prevent them from doing that. And, and you know, if this development goes in there, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it, it's kind of an invasion of your privacy. And, sure. and I just want to in, in make sure that, you know, all of a sudden people aren't spending, you know, to put in 150 feet of fencing at their own expense because you know, they feel insecure or not safe with what's there right now. I, I think it's in my best interest not to comment on the bathing part. <laughs> I think from that. <laughs> Um, in, in, in regards to otherwise, you know, it was mentioned also by one of the people in the public, I think, I, I think it was um, 
uh, Patricia mentioned also about vagrants. We're not going to allow anybody on the property. This is going to be lit. It's going to be maintained. It, most likely there's going to be cameras of some, si some sort on the property. Many tenants actually use that now. Um, and we're not going to allow anybody on the property that shouldn't be there. That should be something that will be maintained. If somebody's going to be coming off the property and they're going to be invading somebody's yard, and just like if somebody's there now, um, we would encourage them to make sure that doesn't happen and call the police if necessary. We're going to put up signs ourselves to make sure that there's no trespassing signs or everybody coming off the property. There's a berm that's on the other side of Carroll's Access Road that we, you know, everybody thought was going to be there, but it's not going to be there. But we'll do our part to make sure that it's maintained appropriately. Nobody being there shouldn't be there. I think the town also has that 911 system that works very well. <laughs> <laughs> very well. I can assure you no one's going to be able to come in from the north. <laughs> It'll look like a scene from Papillon back there if you try to cut across that. And in about two or three years, that, that will be a, a wild no man's wall. And the other thing is, of course, businesses like the bank have a numerous, numerous cameras inside, outside, everywhere. So, and, and that's actually very common with all kinds of tenants now, that they have outdoor, and, and they'll probably be the same around the back of the building, to be honest with you. It's, that's just sort of what you have with commercial buildings these days for protection. So. Okay. So I have just one more thing, and I just wanted to clarify. Uh, one of the one of the um, neighbors, I, I think, um, was concerned or confused on on the square footage. The mentioned in the 70s there's there the, the square footage that we're proposing tonight is uh, 55,796 square feet which is lower than what we had on the master plan originally so but it's never been in the 70s and it never will be in the 70s okay. Okay, I'm gonna open it one more time to the public anyone have any questions concerns Anyone have any more questions, concerns? One more time. Anyone? Questions, concerns? Okay. Hearing none. I'm going to close public hearing 2942. Okay. I did it. <laughs> I made you happy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just not me. Okay. Not used to hammers. So. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we table, you know, public hearing 2942 to our next meeting, because what I want to do, I would like to, you know, make sure that our site-specific conditions include all our concerns and, you know, are accurately defined in terms of, you know, I know that we, we got this, you know, letter from the Conservation Commission, you know, we have to talk about the hours of operation for the dumpsters and, you know, sort of just take a look at, you know, other things, you know, again, you know, maybe put in another condition for noise travel beyond, you know, a certain distance, you know, off, you know, the property so that we, we definitely address all the, the concerns that we have. I don't think you can do noise. I think there's a noise ordinance right. already right. and it's, it's in case anybody has a future problem, <coughs> noise ordinance is the police department. They'll say no, but there is. There's a dumpster pickup. We can already do that right now. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. could set hours for the dumpster. We yeah. need to wait two weeks to do the dumpster ordinance. Right. Yeah. So if you want to have them not, not before 9 o'clock and not after 3, then you can do that. Yeah, yeah and, we're, and we're more than agreeable to do that. We think that's reasonable for most projects that you have. I, I mean, if we, we feel comfortable that we can get all our conditions down, um, you know, I think that, you know, we had a lot of discussions and there was a lot of, you know, some concerns. That was really the concerns. only one I had any concern about in the first place. In, in How does staff feel about concerns? Lori? Lori. 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 Staff? Yes. Uh, do you have any concerns? Rich has concerns and we... In, in terms of site-specific, you know, requirements, you, you know, I, the only one I see on here is. The, the only thing that I found was the um, the dumpsters, and then 
Well, I, the only one in, in our uh, draft uh, resolution is the you know, fences to be installed along the designated snow pile areas, and that's the only thing that's yeah. there. So oh. there, and, there was enlargement of the eastern portion of the landscaping adjacent to the drive through. And, and then we're talking about, the I mean, they're, they're, and we're talking about berms along, you know, at that, that eastern end, you know, southeastern end of the mm -hmm. thing. I, I mean, there's, you know, I would like to see something specifically, you know, well, do you want to Written? do you want to close up? Well, well, the couple. Oh, the public is closed. closed. Right, so. right. So basically, all we have to do is vote on it. But what I would like to, I, I know what I'm going to vote in a positive, but I would just want to make sure that, you know, we, we have all the site specific conditions so that, you know, if if push comes to shove, it's it's definitely there in in a responsible manner rather than. You know, okay, let's just run it through, and and and, and I don't think that waiting two weeks is going to delay your schedule for what you're doing. I, I would say no, but obviously the bank is the one that's actually pressing us. They right. want to get going. They right. want to be in, in that. But I but I think possible. you know again you know we had a discussion about lowering the camper canopy of, of yep. you know the bank you know we so agree. and 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 there's there's so many things that that we discussed and 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 I think that you know it, seeing that we're not going to see additional drawings what we what we need to do is make sure that we include all our concerns you know on paper rather than say you know geez you know we we miss something. No, and Mr. that's my, just my concern. You know, Mr. Mr. in terms of if everybody else is, is, thinks that we can do it in the next 15 minutes, I think we're sort of fooling ourselves because, you know, we have to get the wording right and everything. And I think that staff could, to, could do a j good job, you know, going back through our minutes or our discussions and including all our concerns. Yep. I also just want to note um, the conditions you see at the end of the packet of information for this um, are actually the Wetlands Commission um, conditions. Oh. So if you go to page yes. one, two, three, four, um, there are other conditions over there that are for the planning and zoning approval. So there are some site specific conditions already listed there. Um, but yeah, if you want to table the decision and have staff draft up um, a more inclusive list um, based on the minutes of this meeting, we can certainly do that. I would feel comfortable. I, I'm not sure if everybody else would. Second, whatever whatever works for them is whatever whatever works for the commission. will we'll, we'll, we'll we can take the heat off of you and to say we're okay with the two weeks. If that would be easier for you, we're okay with that. Yeah. You know, and, and make it be much more more comfortable. And even David also volunteered that we want to make sure that berm is next to the bank area as well. We agree I know. with that. I so listed the berm on to the make it easier. If it's building. easier for you, it's easier for us. We understand that. Lower the bank canopy, yeah. dumpsters. I, I, I would definitely again. I'll make that motion again. Okay, you want to table it? You want to sec Yeah, you want to second it? I will second your motion to table. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any comments? Discussion? Well, I understand Rich's concern, um, but just based on the history of the buildings that have been done, um, they've complied with everything that's been asked of them, so I don't have any major concerns, but that's just me, so. Yeah. I think, you know, like Jen said, they can take the minutes and what right. needs to be added can be. Right, and, and that's what we're saying, is, is yeah. that we would like but them to add it. we need to table it to do that. Well, we be added after we we can't vote on it because we we, we, we have to right. include all the site specific conditions in our vote. So in order to do that, we'd have to stay here till you know 11 o'clock to knock everything down. And I'd rather do it. You know, have can staff order a pizza do it if you would like. We can have a pizza come in and <laughs> take some time. Oh, but wow. you, you know. <laughs> It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to I'm trying to think of how many items there would be that you need to address. I agree, and we, we understand there's standard conditions as well. If um, you know, if it's one of those things, it's fine. We'd love to get it tonight. Obviously, that's what we're here for. But if bank. it doesn't, it's up to you. Uh, All right. Well, the hours lowered, for the uh, dumpsters. dumpsters. Lower the bank canopy. Lower the bank canopy. Um, we need to make sure that any um, the no we did the dumpster times. What about we already did that. You'd have to withdraw your motion if we yeah. heard. I'm just trying to think of what the sound from the bank is there, because I know it has to comply with the noise yeah, ordinance. Yeah, oh, that's what can't. the buffer is going to be in the. And so, we just can't, thinking. there is a, a no, noise ordinance, that's so we can't 
put any condition yeah. into that. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to they say. They can that. talk to the bank about it right. themselves. The, the, the bank aware, is, so. is doing a virtual. They're not doing a pneumatic system. So this is all electronic. So this is not going to be noisy as, as it's traditional. I, you, they're, they're very interested in doing it, but they do it with a live person. Oh. So it's on just on a one-on-one -on -one private conversation. Oh, okay. So it's much more quiet than, than people are expecting. They're very state-of-the-art. They're not in town yet. Oh. So they're very, look, they're very much looking to bring in a brand new state-of-the-art branch to come to Enfield. Oh, okay. Um, so what else is there? What else we got? There was some what else? Mm -hmm. um, there was, they've talked, they've, they're already I'm talking sure about their, um, so it's the hours of op uh, dumpster operation, the lowering of the canopy, the berm for the bank. Um, conservation condition comments. Oh, conservation comments. Yeah, I'm sure there's more. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is that? That was. Well, do we have, is, is there a maintenance plan for the open space on the plans? There is. It's already I saw there. a maintenance plan, but I don't know how specific is that maintenance plan for what we was discussed this evening. What we talked about this evening, you said you were going to mow to this point, you were going to keep this a certain way. Is that exactly what's being stated on the maintenance plan here for that? Because I think. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think it's included specifically on the the plan the maintenance plan for the that. maintenance yeah. plan for the open space there's a maintenance plan but i think it it, it just addresses it addresses okay. the you know the plantings and the berm and because i think that's an important piece is yeah, to have no the open the, ha the maintenance for the open space yeah. and then um we know that the open space it's been dedicated or it's going to be dedicated once we right i, I think it gets dedicated once once we pass you get yeah exactly okay. i think it and goes in that order so we that just obligate is, ourselves to make okay. sure that we follow along okay. and the maintenance would be on the open space for that be, open area yeah it, it's as needed no matter what it's not that we do it once and that's all we're done yeah. with it it's <laughs> what we have but we're limiting that area even by the by what the neighbors have asked for yeah because they don't want to have it outgrow but they don't need the whole thing to be a field they yes. don't want that they they want to have it be where there's a there's an open space so there's some depth so we'd leave it and, and do it as necessary mary had Spider. mentioned about the maintenance plan it's it, that was the second item on her list ecc requests a maintenance plan for the open space uh, be included as part of the application so it'd be like a developer's agreement just put something down and right. give it to Lori and yeah, I, I think we can do that, and that's the understanding, but, but, like I said, of dealing with Montclair as well. That was we, what we should be desiring. able to comment on what they're going to propose in terms of right now. We don't even know what they're going to propose. We can't. We can't. It's well, closed. You cannot accept we any can't. more information. Right. You've closed right. the public hearing. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't be having conversations with the I applicant know. at this Sorry. point. I, I, without being mean about it, I mean, I understand what right. you're doing here. But so what I could propose is that we can um you can put, set that as a condition of approval that the maintenance plan for the rear open space be uh, approved by staff so i, I hear lower bank cap, the lower bank canopy increased landscaping east of the canopy uh, you haven't really discussed the dumpster hours i'm not sure what you were planning on that um, condition of approval for maintenance plan to be approved by staff. Um, comments by John Cabibbo should be addressed. Is there anything um, else? Didn't Charlie suggest um, the dumpster hours be? I just said not before nine, not after three. And they were agreeable with it. And um, was something else? Nine to three? Eight to four or whatever. Oh. You know, that's kind of late for garbage, but. how? <laughs> how so, low the canopy has my to garbage be. comes at 4 30 so or five and i live in a residential yeah i would say no less than six or seven i know i heard a lot about lowering the canopy on the bank did anybody mention how much or just to keep it a lower facade than the main frame yeah, the only thing I said is that on the existing building drawings, it shows around 11.4, I think. So, um. it's, it, it's lowering. Well, the question is, is lowering 11 it 11.2. So, so well, basically, lowering it caused, uh, the main plate height was at 16.6, and then the, the, the secondary canopy height was at 11.2. So it was five feet lower. And the, okay. the, 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 the picture that we saw was an even, 
you know, oh, okay. elevation. So it was five feet difference, which is a significant yeah. difference. And so I, I mean, it, you know, and again, it's, you know, whatever, you know, as, as long as we get all these conditions and, you know, I, I'm just skeptical that, you know, we're, we're wasting our time, you know, when, when staff can actually go through and, and pick out everything so that we don't miss anything. And, and Well, e even if we but, need to do that, we still need to go through this process because right. we need to know exactly what you want to see. Right. But, so. but you can get a little more specific and, and get to all the, the, the verbiage in a correct manner so that we don't necessarily have to you know, stumble upon, you know, how we're going to present it. Were there any other conditions that the commission can think of that they'd like to see in here, no. either tonight or in two weeks? <laughs> no. And if you, else? And if you could uh, determine the hours for the dumpsters, one way or the other. I, yeah, I have faith in staff. You know, I think that staff is capable of taking what we've said and putting it in the conditions of approval. And if not, we'll just hang them by the thumbs until they turn red. There we <laughs> yeah. go. Or, or we'll see it in the minutes. <laughs> I mean, we could make dumpster hours from 8 a.m. to 5. I'm sure by 5 o'clock, they're gone. Yeah. I mean, or not 8 well, to no. Forget you're in a residential area. Nine, yeah. you know, some people are second shift or have babies, so nine is a little late. Or eight well, to eight. I, I'm eight to eight. My only thought on the height issue is where accessibility for a vehicle, just to I, make sure. I, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. I just threw some numbers out. Eight to eight, eight in the morning to eight at night. I don't eight know. Eight to five is good. Eight to five. All right, eight to five. Make up. Make it up when they can get there. All right. Okay. So the hours of the dumpsters would be eight to five. There, the dumpster hours are set. <laughs> Anything else that we can? Gonna make a motion then? I, he made a motion to table. You second it. Yep. So now we need. To so we need to. So, so I'm confused. Are we gonna let our staff, you know, take all our comments now and include them as, you know, site-specific comments, or are we gonna regurgitate what we just said and try to get we, everything? Well, out? they have in the past. We've always allowed staff, we tell them what we want and they make it look nice. Right, but, and we, but we tell them. Oh, yes, and we've told oh. them. I made a list. All right. If okay, you, in, in that case, I'll withdraw my motion to table. Second. All right. <laughs> okay. okay. I can't make a motion. No. Okay. Go, Mary. I'd like to make a motion that we approve public hearing 2942. A for 143, 145, 147, 149, and 153 Elm Street and Lot 72 Carroll Street. Um, as noted in the June 13th, 2019 draft resolution prepared by the Planning Department with 33 conditions and the addition of dumpster hours being 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., lowering the bank canopy. Um, the berm on the eastern side of the bank building being included and a maintenance plan um, for the open space in the rear of the property. That's it. Second. Okay, any further discussion on this? Uh, were we going to include the Conservation Commission comments too, or? They were on the record when they, she gave them yeah, but, but, but she just read them for the record, but they're not part of site-specific conditions. Well, I, I, th I think we should review them and, and see which ones are viable and which ones aren't. I already looked at them, and yeah. I think the only one that definitely was the maintenance plan was really imp of importance yeah. for me. So that's going to be part of the maintenance plan. And I think some of the others were addressed already. And I think, yeah, and I, uh, my thing was about the underground electric service. I think that's done automatically now, isn't it? 
Oh, no. Yes, she's not looking. It, 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 she's not looking. All the electrical service is underground already. <laughs> it's already buried, so. Yeah, pretty hot. Yeah. So. Any other further discussion? Any comments, the, Lori, the, with regards in, in to reading? This? Okay. I'm sorry. I thought that was odd. Most of these could be uh, incorporated into the maintenance plan. Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. So Anything else? And seconded, so yeah. ready. Are we done? Who, who made that second? Uh, she made the second. I, I seconded. Charlie seconded. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Yep. We're ready. Okay. All in favor? Who's <laughs> against? Abstain. So we have four, four, no against, zero four, against, zero. and one abstained. <laughs> so. Reasons right. for the uh, for the abstaining. I think we we could have done a better job with a site specific conditions. I think that we, we rushed into something that we really didn't need to rush into. I think that the applicant was more than amiable to for us to, to get the things right. And you know, I think that sometimes when you, you rush into some things you you miss things and I think we, we owned owned all the comments that we heard from the people that took their time here to come here today to give us their concerns that we, we should address all their concerns and you know we, we shouldn't and it, again if there was some real pressing manner that we really had to you know approve it I think we could have but the fact that we we had the time and we could have done a better job that we shouldn't just rush to accomplish things just to get them accomplished if they're not necessarily to the best interest of everybody involved. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. I will take care of it. Well, I'm sure you will. You know, and, I'm, and I had no concerns. I just wanted, you know, to us to do a better job. Thank you. Okay. Other business. Okay. Any other business? Correspondence. Oh. Commissioner correspondence. Uh, commissioner correspondence. I do. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> what else we got here? No <laughs> She's got Okay. Um, we're commissioner's correspondence. I do have two issues. I'm sure one of them has already been clicked to fix. Uh, the swimming pool in the front yard on North Street. <laughs> <laughs> already heard about it. Yeah, that was pretty, I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sure they they didn't know, but um, the second one is on um, South Road, the Tarno Nursery. I went by there. It looks like they've cleared cut some more. Then I, I don't know if they're now into the wetlands. They were approved under wetlands to do a certain amount of clearing. Um, Rick has been uh, notified of the work and he's gone out there and uh, he's working on enforcement for that property. So they still have time on their permit to do the work that is required to be done under their approvals there. Um, I personally haven't been out there to see if they're compliant. I know that Rick has, so uh, we'll get a report from Rick. Okay. Um, at the next meeting. Yeah, that was the only two. Th that, that was like when I went by there. I'm like, I don't think that was supposed yeah. to happen. But then uh, it's been a while, so mm -hmm. I, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. Swimming you, pool. Is that a corner lot? Yeah. That's well, why. No. Well, not really. Is it on two streets? It's on North Street in their front yard no, by no. their front door. No. <laughs> North Street, but there's no street on the side. Like a little pool, I am, like excuse me, no, we're in meetings still. Yeah. yeah, thank you. 
You try it. Well, the reason I... The reason I ask is because all swimming pools, unless they're little wading pools, have building permits. And Rick Rochelle should not have signed off on that if indeed it's not a corner lot. I don't think he did if you saw where this is. No, if it's like an index, you can put that up without a permit. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. No. No, no, you can't. No. Let's put it this way. They can jump on their front they could come jump into Except their pool from their front right. steps <laughs> and from their yeah. window that would be interesting <laughs> all right really interesting yeah so okay other than that okay uh director of planning's report i don't have a whole lot um that we have continued one item for the next meeting, and that is the uh, places of worship. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we have no applications. Wow. I happen? guess it's our summer free time. However, mm -hmm. we do have money allocated to start looking for consultants for the POCD and zoning regulations. Okay. So I think that would be a great opportune time to talk about what we'd like to to see and what we'd like the consultants to be doing great so so read through them both before we get there yeah <laughs> yes. because i know you can't sleep at night so no <laughs> well actually it's a great sleeping pill you know you it, open it is it up, you start... <laughs> so i mean you, can, you can't do it all at once you have to kind of like You're go through one yeah. chapter at a time but i mean try to think of the you know do we want to make things easier uh, do we want to make it more friendly? Would you know? Yep. There's there's a number of things that we actually would like to get rid of. Okay. Things like sellers. What was the other ones? Yeah, there's a couple um, items that are just like reoccurring things that come down from the building department. Um, sort of conflicts between what uh, people are looking to build and what our regulations say. Um, one being the sellers for certain styles of houses not really being. Um, oh, yeah, you me I guess yeah, pertinent or compatible um, with the style of house, and then um, there's uh, Let's go into Allison, oh the the building height for accessory buildings is at 12 feet in the regulations, um, and if they want to build any higher than that, they have to connect the house, and usually they do that in the form of a breezeway. Um, you see them all over town, but uh, in talking to the building official, he said that a uh, pretty standard height that is accepted in surrounding towns as well in their accessory building um, height regulations is 15 feet. So it's not a huge jump that they're saying that, that, that they're recommending, but I, I said I would, a I would ask <laughs> to see if you guys would be open to some sort of amendment, um, sort of provide some sort of relief to the people who are looking to make these improvements on their property the, 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 these are more of quick fixes just because it, just about every time we have a building permit it comes up okay. I mean like the sellers and things like that and it's like I'm not sure why we require sellers it's really not a planning issue okay. so. no and could, could 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 we also include Beans in lieu of sidewalks yes. <laughs> as a quick so, fix? Yeah, so um, I was looking at that statute, and you could only use that with subdivisions. So I haven't found one that you could use in commercial businesses. So I'm going to have to see if there's a way that we could write it into the regulations it, uh, as something that would be predictable. That's that's the big thing. You can't be a waiver, but it's got to be predictable. So, you know, maybe it's predictable if there are no sidewalks within a quarter mile of this, then you could waive it. But if there's sidewalks next door, you have to have them or something like that. Yeah, because because I think mostly we're talking about not residential zones, but more industrial type yeah. zones where you know there are not there is not going to be a, a lot of pedestrian traffic and. You know, it's an isolated condition surrounded by, you know, other properties that are likely zoned, so. Okay. Um, what were some of the other quick fixes we, oh, we were, oh, the patios. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, we've, we've got an applicant that is very interested in having a large outdoor dining area. It's not just dining, though, it's got amusement things like uh, what's the bocce. but no not bocce the uh, 
the 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 cornhole, <laughs> cornhole and a bocce court and probably pool tables or something like, stuff like that. But it's outdoor and it's dining and so. And again, um, without being site specific, it'd be hard to say. Yeah, we could do that. Well, so. if. And I was just looking. It's not a special permit for outdoor, right? If it's on the landfill. It is okay. So, so outdoor dining is is a special permit. Mm -hmm. So you would. That's how you get your site specific. So the question is: Is can it be more than fifty percent of but the floor area? We've gotten taken to court for special use permit conditions we put on, and we had to back off. But we also have zoning. Um, ordinances that right. say your outdoor dining can't be more than yes, yes. exactly and, and so that, that's like a, a little mini golf course where they have the little teeny tiny um, uh, you know um, eating, area? eating area and the rest is all like shoot your golf balls it's like an entertainment you know? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there might be a, a specific seating area, but it's also other items so. You know other amusement type oh, stuff. Yeah, I think Linda's right. It's not. You know, we don't know what it is, right. and you, you can't. You can't throw generalities out. Yeah. So. They want to see them well, come in and get more. Specific. I think the request really is: Would you be open to seeing a some sort of a proposed text amendment, something that's not necessarily um, site specific? Because text amendments, they really are not, not, supposed, not to supposed to be site, to be site specific. specific. So. It is it's really would you entertain some sort of change not really say not necessarily taking that completely off the table but would you be open to some sort of I would um, because it's it's you're changing the regulations for one unknown entity but that's just oh, me no, no, no. <laughs> I mean this would, obviously it would not be just for one unknown entity I mean for instance last night I went to a place in Southwark and I was out on the deck next to a lake that was bigger than the restaurant. To me, I seek something like that out. I want outdoor dining. I want to be able to go outside and, and eat, have a beverage. And usually when you go to these places, there's like four tables and they're already taken and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have to sit inside, it's bright and sunny. So I, I don't, I'm not sure what the reasoning for not allowing more if, of this is. I mean, well, I'm not sure what your reasoning is. I know you're enjoying it, but then you have you have to look at places that you don't want it. And I understand about a special use permit right. and what you can put, but mm -hmm. I don't hold as much faith in special use permits as you do. <laughs> well, sim similar to what what we did with the outdoor dining um, that that was approved tonight, it w it was a change that was made, but. Um, to allow the amplified audio systems, they had to meet certain criteria. So I guess if we were, if if there was to be a proposal to change that 50% rule, criteria would could be put in there to be met so that mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't just be uh, yeah, based on conditions or what you might determine as appropriate or not. Yeah, maybe it's heavily landscaped, you know, bollards are put in or things of that nature. I'm just wondering where the what the reasoning for the 50% is. I, and and I, think I just don't know what the reasoning is. It was is. an accessory use. Yeah. That's what it came out as. That's what it started as. That's what it is. I think mm -hmm. a lot now of it. Now you're, you're asking for a cornhole thing or horseshoe pits that yeah. are larger <laughs> than the restaurant that they're going to. But again, that's just me. Well, I think that when I, I know for me, when it when you look at a restaurant, you look at the fact that weather's not always going to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Time of year is not always going to cooperate, obviously, because it's going to become winter or whatever. So the success of a business also means they have to have enough space inside yeah. to accommodate people as well as outside. So I think in some ways there was a piece there that was to um, not just make it only an outdoor event or venue, that also made it indoor as well to help I think that was part of some of the reasoning behind it. Okay. Um, at least that was my impression. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think too, I don't know if I, if I, I mean, I'd have to, Charlie would have to speak to some of his reasons because I think he has probably more of an idea and you, 
would know, yeah, more because of the history of uh, the commission. So, yeah. what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? And why we did we did the fifty percent? I think that was before my time, but uh, <laughs> was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, before my memory's time. <laughs> Well, maybe so, we'll we'll he, try to word with something, and and if you like it, great. And if you don't, right. you can turn it down. You, you know, I I think that you have to address you know the actual how it relates to to the adjacent environment too. Right. And in terms of you, you know, it's it's one of these things where if it's a standalone restaurant and they have plenty and plenty of space, they have plenty of parking, and they have a significant view of you know a waterfall or a pond or something of interest, then you know I, I think that you know we've all gone down to the shore and you know wanted to sit at Bill's restaurant and he's got you know 20 tables outside and five tables inside, and everybody wants an outside table and all the 20 tables outside are taken and five yeah. tables inside. All Oh, I get stuck over here. You know, I wish he had five more so I could be sitting out there. So I think that you know, but but it's the view. It, it's it has to have you know some reason to, to, to for you to go there because you know if you have a, a significantly larger you know exterior seating area than you have an internal seating area, and you know there's nothing to see. You know why sit out there? You, 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 so I think that you know it has to be a venue where it it actually has some beneficial value to the diner or whoever's going to be using that area. So I, I think that, you know, in that case, I, I think I would like to see something that could sort of define, you know, that kind of criteria that, you know, it, and it has to be a, a successful area, you know, and, and like Mary was saying, I thought she was going down this road that, you know, if it's a nice sunny day and, and you have, you know, 20 tables outside and only five tables inside, that you can fill all everything all at once. And then when it rains, you, you only get five tables and, and your income is, is that much less. And, and restaurants are very you know, marginal in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, whether they're going to make a profit or not. So that if we can improve or enhance the possibility of somebody making a profit because of the fact that he has additional seating that he can utilize during good times and, and you know, and he has that ambiance that creates that wonder of, you know, that feeling that you want to actually utilize it, then I think that, you know, we should allow a little larger area. Well, I think, That's too, great. I think the other piece as well is I think the concern was, well, you know, you start having these games and then you start getting into the colder weather and then are they going to put up heaters? Are yeah. they going to be putting yeah. enclosures down and yeah. can, can we really regulate that and is that a fire hazard? Is that a concern? Do you know what I mean? Like, so how far is this going to extend? And that's why we always put in when we do outside dining, where are you going to store the stuff? Mm -hmm. When are you going to stop serving outdoors? You have the outdoor? right to ask that. So, oh, you know, absolutely. and that's... You have the right to ask that now. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So those yeah. would be I, kind of the well, questions. I like Rick. Rich's um, theory on the scenic view, you know, like on this Connecticut River, we're all looking for Thompsonville revitalization, a nice restaurant with a view of the river, uh, Powder Hollow, you know, the, the brewery, maybe yeah. some of that building could be, I don't know, but I, I do like your approach to it. On the other hand, we have that problem down the south end of Enfield Street where they, uh, yeah. their capacity exceeds their parking ability. They're oh, parking yes. on the tree yes. belt, they're yeah. parking yeah. on the street, yeah. they're parking I, everywhere not, but where they're so, supposed to. Yeah. But, 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 that, but again, that's what I said, is they have okay. to have adequate you know, facilities okay. and, and adequate parking but where, you, it, and it doesn't. So they take that. Yeah, but 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 again, you know, I think that it, it, we we get to actually do a site plan review, so we would know exactly what they're doing and you know what well, we what would have there. to be done. So special, special use, use permit. That was down there. No, that's what we're saying. That oh, yeah. we Get for this. It's a special use. Okay. Permit. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, oh. Just a question on North Street. How did they make up with that? The trucking company on North Street. I don't. Oh, Lori, how did they make out with that trucking company on North Street? Oh, <laughs> no, but I'm sorry. Because I, uh, I saw trucks there when I went and looked at the swimming pool. So. Well, you got a whole business <laughs> running out of there. All right. Um, the, we're we're still working on it. Okay. okay. Oh, 
Thank I'll, you. I'll say that, that we are still working on it. Okay. And, uh, we just were talking with the attorney yesterday, so. All right. All right, anything else? Okay, okay motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right, thank you.